to my sister. Right. I ate already, so okay. I'm not going to be eating on stream. Um, which is unusual for me. Yeah, <laughs> it is. All right, just uh, just wait a sec. Yeah. So if you are here in the chat or you're watching the vod, you're seeing just a lot of uh, a lot of nothing right now, basically. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, hey. I it's, I'm in Discord. It's not letting me queue up and act. So. Commercials can only be run when your channel is live. I am live, you fucking piece of junk. <laughs> Need to like refresh the page or something. All right, there we uh, go. All right. I'll be back in a second. Yeah, but uh, to the audience, you guys are about to get uh, a few minutes of ads to kick things off. I know you're very excited. This is hopefully uh, going to turn off pre-roll ads, <laughs> and um. You know, if you're if you're watching the VOD, just feel free to skip ahead a couple minutes. We will do our intro after these are over. And there they go. I think? No, there they go. There they go. Hello, hello. Hi. Trey, we're live, but we're in an ad break. Ah. Just like being Yes, off like a few air. hours ago. Anyway, I'm going live momentarily. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do it live. Fuck it, we'll do it live. God. Uh, yeah. Fun. Uh, Hi, I'm here. Hello, we have 90 seconds of commercials remaining. So. Oh wow, that's a lot of. Yeah. Well, I. I are we? Are I'm we? Gone. Linear television now. Yeah, we're linear television now. Shit, Linear Television would be a great name for a song. Or a band. Or a band. Would. Oh shit, that's true. Either works, yeah. Oh, uh, since I'm playing by myself today, let me turn on the screen cap. It should work. I don't see why it wouldn't. Linear Television <clears throat> sounds like a post-punk band. It does. Well, just regular television was a band, so I guess that's why. Yeah, and also alternative television. Alternative, also as it. alternative television is actually not a bad description for what we do here on Shapes and Forms. Yeah, alternative television were, um, they started out as one of the, the earliest English punk bands, yeah. and then uh, turned into, well, like, Archetype uh, weird post punk no, band. This ain't working. You're you're turning into a robot already. Why uh, does oh, why does Risk of Rain not like to be streamed? I'm back. I think. Uh oh. I'm back. Hello. Sorry, I accidentally left the call instead of turning off screen share. Uh, we should be live now. Yeah. Okay. That's the end of the ad break. Hello, everybody. It is 9pm on the East Coast and 8pm here in Chicago, where I am. And this is Shapes and Forms. We are now a linear TV program, which is why uh, it started with two minutes of ads. If you did not get the memo on Twitter, which I don't blame you for, not everybody could check everything on Twitter all the time. Um, the, uh, the thing going forward is we're going to be running two minutes of ads on the hour. So like one once an hour into the show and once two hours into the show and then again at both ends. So like before the show starts and after it ends. The idea, well hopefully it will make me money but that's actually a secondary goal. The idea is that if I do it enough Twitch will turn off pre-roll ads and you guys will no longer have to watch ads literally any time you come to the stream. Instead, they will come on at pre-scheduled intervals. We're still experimenting with it, but hopefully it works. Hmm. Anyway, yeah, sorry, that, sorry to you two that the friggin' screen share still isn't working. That's really eh. annoying. I don't know why Risk of Rain just really doesn't want to be streamed. I don't know either. Hello, section. 
Uh, our docket for today, as I get started on my my solo Risk of Rain run, because Trey is uh, out of the out of the house and cannot join me tonight. Yeah. Um, is Risk of Rain for the first hour. Second hour was going to be Dead Cells, but I've had a hankering for some Isaac lately, so we're gonna play Isaac in the second half. And then uh, in the third half, making its long-awaited return to the stream mm -hmm. since, mm -hmm. for the first time since 2017, is uh, Fist's Elimination Tower. I am very excited about. Hello, Mer. Uh, I, I quickly have to hang up and then return to the call. All right. So I'll be back in a sec, because uh, it's doing the robot voice thing a little. Okay. Should you give me a like if you want to? I actually don't know what likes do for you like as a streamer but i you know if you feel compelled to give me a like go ahead and do it it might just be you get oxycontin <laughs> or oxy oxytocin sorry <coughs> anyway trey how are you i'm doing all right that's good so uh hi hi we can we can start off by talking about the ordeal i had to go through today <laughs> Okay. Um, so, Discord, the the messaging service, which I believe literally my entire audience knows me from, and also us three used to uh, to uh, to talk, Col um, collaborate with each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, they <sighs> launched a like collaborative thing with Xbox, where if you get Discord Nitro, you can get. Uh, an Xbox Live Game Pass, which gives you access to... You basically rent them. Uh, like a library of like a hundred some games that you can just play on your computer. Now, yeah, if you've been alive for more than five minutes, you might think that surely there's a catch to this. And you are correct. Mm. The catch is that you have to use uh, Microsoft's like, um, wow, brilliant behemoth is my first item. Um, you have to use Microsoft's uh, PC Xbox client if you want to play them on a computer. Yep. Hmm. Now, this in of itself would not be a big problem. However, uh, like, I had to recover my Xbox account because I haven't used it. In like a million years and to do that i had to their recovery form is like a quiz about yourself it's like hey uh. give us uh all of your recent email addresses give us like anything you used for any of our services so if you got like an xbox gamer tag or if you ever had a skype username they want to know that Give us your credit card numbers for credit cards you oh. bought stuff from from us with. Jesus Christ. Like Boy it, oh boy. <laughs> I told Cece it was like taking a quiz about myself that I failed. It was just the most miserable oh. experience. I eventually got it working, but by the time I was done, like I wanted to break into Bill Gates' house and install fucking Ubuntu on all his devices. <laughs> God. <laughs> oh, Lord. Lord knows he'd probably deserve it. Uh, what is... Why am I a... What's a, what's a Yithian? I don't know what a Yithian is. Uh, the Yithian are... Uh-oh. Lovecraft's the shadow out of time. They're cone people. I look more... Uh, like, yeah. I don't know, like, uh... Rex looks more like some kind of weird flower to me. But, uh, They're maybe... like cone people with claws on the ends of tentacles, and they have like weird flower things for uh, sensory organs. Well, maybe that's maybe that's where he's uh, getting the comparison yeah. from. Yeah, they have like trumpet hmm. heads, trumpet flower that are on the ends of like long tentacle necks. But yeah, this is Rex. I uh, unlocked Rex recently. And uh, yeah. currently, I have all the characters in the game, per in fact. Personally, it made me think of the sculpture from Legati's Les Fleurs. 
Hmm. Um, which uh, is a reference rights. only Murr will get, incidentally. I'll say, I'll say tentacle rights. I'm not a coward. I don't know what it means, but I'll say it. Is it rights for tentacles or rights for people who have them? People who want tentacles? Just tentacle rights. Tentacle in general. Rights. But, um... Yeah. Rex is fun. I like Rex. Oh, and the and to the answer of the... That, that question, the answer is... What question? You know, is it for people who want tentacles? Is it for people with tentacles? Is it rights for tentacles? The answer is yes. Good point. Stream Death Stranding? Listen, listen to me. I need you to look me in the eyes right now. <clears throat> Everything I have seen about Death Stranding makes it look like every stereotype that people have about, like, arty games rolled into one and then made a million times worse by being affiliated with, like, a triple-A celebrity game director. <laughs> like, if uh, you if you like Death Stranding, cool, and I mean that legitimate, legitimately, everything I have seen about Death Stranding, I've been like, this looks like the worst game ever made. <laughs> I don't know, it looks like something I would enjoy if I... It's... Don't take this the wrong way. It's weird enough to be something you'd enjoy. <laughs> yeah. Like, I mean, I like the idea of you are a post-apocalyptic dream. What? You're cutting I out like the idea. Oh, okay. Well, I might need to close Twitch, unfortunately. That's uh, possible. Because it's uh, just you, so I know it's not uh, on my end for once. But... The idea of being a post-apocalyptic UPS delivery man no, no, is no, no, kind no. of great. Y you misunderstand me. That part's fine. The premise, I have no problems with the premise. The issue, <laughs> like, if you wanted, you to do a lot of walking. Like, well, no, that's that's e that's not even it either. Like, if you wanted to make an environmental exploration game, I like those. I like the Arrester. I okay. like Gone Home. I've played many of those games, and I think they're very interesting. <laughs> My understanding is that there's a bot there's like a lot of weird tedious management stuff in Death Stranding too. I mean, yeah, there is Which, a lot like, of management stuff. That's that why? is also my understanding. And I don't actually necessarily I don't actually necessarily mind those things because there's some weird part of me that finds it kind of oddly appealing that's, the idea. That's like the, that's the part where it loses me. I'm like, you put this in here, and if someone says that they don't like it, the the response is like, oh, well, you don't appreciate that it's going for it, it, immersion or whatever the hell. Like, it's just, <clears throat> it's not. <laughs> Again, if you liked the game and got the, even, like, a little bit of anything out of it, Genuinely, I am happy for you. It will not be appearing on the shapes and forms or MPL at any at any point in the future. That's I play what remains of Edith Finch. I would like to play that game at some point. It looks interesting. Uh, my thing is still like glitching you, out. You actually sound fine now. Weirdly enough. Yeah, it's just that you're cutting out a lot. Huh peculiar. Anyway, sorry about the little mini mm. rant there. That's just, it just doesn't seem like my kind of game. It's the long and short of it. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, but yeah, I'm gonna try uh, okay. fiddling about with this a bit. I will be back in a second. Sure thing. Again. As far as uh, AAA games that came out recently that I might stream, uh, one of the things that you get access to with the Game Pass was that I mentioned earlier is uh, Outer Worlds, which I've been wanting to check out because I kind of missed the Fallout New Vegas boat. Uh, yeah. And apparently it's just like that, but in space. And yeah. I like I like that as a concept that appeals to me. 
And also significantly more focused in, like, terms of the length of the story and everything like that. Like, yeah. I've heard that even with the side missions and everything, the game only tops out at, like, like significantly less than uh, what Fallout will have you doing with all of the uh, DLC and everything. That makes sense. They probably are going to release, like, expansion packs for it at some point, but... Yeah. Like, uh, I, it, it just looks like it would be a good time. So I'm I interested. Do, I do definitely think that uh, the idea of having a more oh, yeah. focused RPG, like, in that style, appeals to players like myself who might not necessarily always want to uh, be able to invest, like, hours and hours and hours into a plot that feels like it's yeah. not always going anywhere. Yeah, I feel ya. Hey, Trey, did you change something on your end? Um... Wait, now it now you sound fine. For a minute there, like, you, you were still coming through, but you sounded like you were talking through an old-timey radio. Um, maybe it might have been because I was standing... Well, not standing, sitting against the headboard of my it's bed here. Entirely possible acoustics that are... That is very are strange. Strange, strange science. Yeah. It's, whatever it was, is gone now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about the adventures of the Shadow Tray. <laughs> uh. Also, I, I... I accidentally missed this comment from April earlier. I do agree that the jokes about Death Stranding are very funny. Norman Reedus on the Funky Fetus, I can get down with that. But yeah, how are you, like, you guys in chat doing lately? Anything interesting going on in the wild world of, uh, the world? I'm kind of disappointed Death Stranding came out so soon. It does kind of seem like one of those projects that should have been, yeah, like, delayed until, like, 2025 or something. Maybe that's the problem. The world just isn't ready for Death Stranding yet. There's this tool in Death Stranding called the Ogre Deck. <coughs> Yeah, so I've heard. Yeah, I... Um, what actually the, is an older deck? I always forget. The music that I've heard from the game seems like it's pretty good. Uh, churches did a track for it, Would and... You describe the soundtrack as a slapper? <laughs> actually, yeah, uh, like, some some of the tracks, like, are, are genuinely, like, much more upbeat and, uh... Like sonically diverse than I would have figured. Mm. Like it kind of, kind of threw me for a loop because like most of the, uh, most of the trailers gave it a kind of like dark and moody feel. Yeah, but it, does, That's it doesn't kind of always. What I was expecting. Hold. Yeah, it doesn't always hold to that, which is surprising and kind of cool. Yeah. I, uh, you know. It's interesting that it's got a neat soundtrack, if nothing else. Yeah. I I figure that it's one of those ones where I I might not necessarily be the target audience for it, but for the people that it's made for, they are going to go nuts over it, and I yeah. am proud of that. And also, um, it feels like it would probably be fun to watch because I'm the type of person who I, I don't know if I'd ever play a Kojima game but I sure as hell would watch one like yeah endlessly. yeah I think that's fair uh like I know the streamer Rockley Smile kind of went the like like he, he really likes it which it seems like his sort of game I yeah. think it's a game that would that like and this is true of many different kinds of media, but be kind of improved by seeing somebody who really likes it do it instead of yeah. uh, doing it yourself. Yeah. So Gary? there's that. Who's Gary? Um, 
Halo Reach is on the way for PC. It is. And I was briefly misled earlier today to thinking that you could buy it standalone for $10. Which does not appear to be true. Mm. Well, Tragically. Uh, I feel like it'll probably be part of the Xbox Game Pass subscription. That's my hope. So I'm just yeah. like, I'm just hanging out until that happens. Because, like, the, uh, the Xbox One version of it is present on the console version of yeah. Game Pass. So, it, it feels like... <laughs> Why wouldn't you put Halo on your yeah, subscription service it that seems, you are... <laughs> yeah, it seems like a way to get a lot of people on board. Yeah. And that you are actively trying to promote. Yeah. Gary Butterfield's a podcast in the scene. He hasn't played it, but he hates it. He's mostly good, except when he defends shitty podcasters because they're friends of a friend of a friend. Yeah, that's how media circles be. Alright. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what else has there been recently? Um, struggling to think for things immediately off the top of the dome. I played, like, half an hour of Bloodstained earlier. That was good. Yeah. If anyone is not familiar, that's the game that came out earlier this year. It's it's Castlevania, but again. <laughs> hmm. And you know, I thought it was pretty fun. I don't know very much about the Castlevania series, but Bloodstained seems like a good time. Hey, you. Hello. Good day. Uh, so I was uh, fiddling around with some settings, but I also put down some uh, mint extract soaked things to uh, drive away the uh, rodents. I see. Can, can you get the rodents on the stream, Freddy? I'd prefer not. <laughs> this is the mouse podcast now. Dear fucking lord. Um, but, um, yeah, and actually in other game-related news, uh, if you were here a few days ago, you may have known, I started an Illusion of Gaia live series. Uh, what is Illusion of Gaia? So, it's an action RPG for the Super Nintendo, mm -hmm. came out in 1993, Okay. I did not know a ton about it going in. I was sold on it uh, by our good friend Zersk. Ah. Who, uh... Huh. They, they were like, you'd probably like this, because, like, it, the gameplay is Zelda, and the story is weird. And I've played hmm. about three and a half hours of it at this point, and I huh. can confirm that that is a good description of Illusion of Gaia. Hmm. Did I find the Indian flying ship? Yes, I did. Would you like to know about the Indian flying ship, Shreddy and Trey? Sure. Yeah. There, the first dun like the first major dungeon of the game, is what is described to you somewhat confusingly as Indian ruins, and hmm. you go there and you fight a bunch of creatures, including a very frustrating first boss, and uh, you find a fly, like, like, a ship made out of solid gold. Okay. And your character has, like, a weird past life sequence, but okay. then, then they wake up and you're still on the ship. Oh, neat. And then you leave, and then the mm -hmm. ship gets attacked by something or rather i forget actually and then there's a whole long sequence it's like an hour long it felt like of you're like just on driftwood floating in the sea with uh hmm. with another character and it's this long narrative sequence it's very like it struck it, it struck me as kind of like experimental given when it came out hmm. i actually think Fredney, that you would like it a good amount 
Yeah, that it's does also, seem intriguing. It's also the source of two things from Undertale, which I did not know before playing it. Uh, which hmm. things in Undertale? Uh, the whole snail pie bit in, in Undertale, and hmm. the thing, like the prison sequence in Deltarune. Oh. Those are huh. both references to uh, Halugan of Gaia. Hmm. It's an interesting yeah, game. Scans. And I am excited to play more of it. There will probably be another stream of that in a few days Neat. at most. <coughs> I might even do one tomorrow if I'm feeling a little bit mm. bored. Very cool. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. But it's a it's a banger of a game. Yeah, I, I apologize for not having more to add. I am very tired. Oh, that's okay. I'm just um, glad you're here. Yeah. Uh, so, what have you been up to, Trey? <coughs> um, lots of writing for my uh my new freelance position at Game Rant. Mm -hmm. Oh, right. Cool. You should talk I've... about that. Uh, well, I've been covering stuff like the uh, the recent controversy over the uh, the Pokedex being the national Pokedex being removed from uh, Pokemon Sword and Shield. And, what? Uh, uh, to to put it in layman's terms, uh, previously you used to be able to use Pokemon from any past generation in a given Pokemon game. Uh -huh. uh, and that is not true anymore. That's rude. It's annoying. I don't think it's as big of a deal as people made it out to be, but whatever. We should we should let Trey finish. Yeah. Yeah. yeah uh, so there has been like a rather large amount of controversy over it with uh, with folks getting. The way that the internet tends to the, tends to blow things out yeah. of proportion sometimes, mm -hmm. where uh, folks that aren't even related to the game's development are getting death threats and that kind oh, of oh jeez Louise over an issue that is ostensibly about a kids game, which yeah. you know, and it's like you know it's unfortunate and it's like if you want to write you know an angry letter that's just like. You know, like, I would really like this back, and I'm very frustrated that you've done the Like, you know, that's fine, but, like, threatening to kill people over a game thing that annoyed you about one entry in a franchise makes you kind of horrible. A little bit. So, there was that one, and then also... Um, another story that I, I covered was uh, that Naughty Dog, the developers of The Last of Us Part Two, are looking for a, a head programmer for their uh, multiplayer team because they're working on a new title that's supposed to uh, be in the vein of the, the multiplayer section of the first Last of Us game because it's hmm. being spun off into its own title, it appears to be. Interesting. Huh. You know, we're almost half an hour into the stream. I think this is the longest we've ever gone actually talking about games on this show. Yeah. That's... <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I'm glad that you got you got some stuff going on at that on there, Trey. Yeah. Um, it's it's a good a nice gig, feeling. and I've, I've appreciated being part of it so yeah. far. Hopefully the start of a fruitful relationship. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good luck. Like, sincerely. What? Yeah, you... definitely. And also, I am hopefully getting the new expansion for Destiny 2 in a couple of days. That's cool. Which I am excited mm -hmm. for, because... I play that game a lot. It's kind of embarrassing. <laughs> uh, it's a fun game. I only ever play it, like... I have a weird relationship with the Destiny franchise. I'll yeah. play it, like, I'll install it, and I'll play it for a couple days, and I'll be like, this is really fun. And then I'll get to a point where I need to, like, exert a fair amount of effort to get to some goal, and I'll be like, 
eh, I'll just play something else. And then I don't touch right. it again for six months. <laughs> it's just, I don't know. So with me, Destiny is one of those games that I, I play as like an option where either I can't think of anything else to play, or I can think of other things to play, I just don't want to. Yeah. Hmm. Um, so I, I find myself going to it a lot for, uh, for moments of boredom. And also, uh, recently I've been, uh, my, my friends have been getting into playing together in the, uh, in the raids and, uh, doing like end game content with everybody, like as part of That's one, nice. like big, big group that I've been part of. So An when I'm not streaming or. So when I'm not streaming or uh, writing for the blog, it is typically spent playing with one or more of my friends in D2. Neat. Yeah. So um. I've been enjoying that. Um, it's nice to have a, a little bit of like uh, com an accompaniment for a game that's like so very heavily multiplayer focused. Because I've been playing the series since uh, the second year of D1 for the most part, and it has been lonely for most of that <laughs> yeah. time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they they very much build it with the uh, presumption that you will either play with friends or try to make them in an attempt to actually enjoy the game to its to its fullest, which not everybody's willing to do. But, you know, it's been nice to actually have that as as a option, since it wasn't really one for me before. Yeah. But, um, yep. yeah, that's cool. Like, th that, that was kind of always what got me about Destiny 2, was like, they clearly expect you to have a decent-sized playgroup for most things. Yeah. Yeah. And I... That's kind of... Like... Uh, with the exception of a couple games like this one, I largely don't enjoy multiplayer games unless yeah. they're competitive. So like I, yeah, I don't know. I'm just not Risk that kind of social, I suppose. Risk of Rain is definitely one where the the multiplayer aspect has always been something that people have always really enjoyed with it. It's just that uh, the first game's implementation of it made it really hard for people to actually be able to connect and play together. Yeah. And so the second one mitigates that significantly to the point where it's almost like <laughs> the default experience to play with friends, at least in our case. Yeah. Like, you definitely yeah. can play it by yourself, but I think yeah. it's kind of made with the idea that you'll play with uh, some friends in mind. Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of reminding me of uh, some, like, uh, this thing I watched of, like, a guy who um, had uh, been, you know, like, playing World of Warcraft for the last, like, like, since it came out mm -hmm. and comparing how it, how modern World of Warcraft is and then wow classic and also how it used to be which is actually slightly different <laughs> i um, was there i was there when it when it was what wow classic is based on and i'll tell you uh -huh. how it used to be bad <laughs> yeah but the thing is it's like well it's like it's very much based on it is the kind of the point was that it's like yeah there's a lot of stuff that by modern standards is bad game design it's you know because it's partly because it was experimental and partly because people just did not know what the fuck they were doing at that point and hadn't Hello, come sirs. up with better things but there were also other things that are understandably preferable to some people fuck. like certain people play in a certain way and it's like but the thing is that like with i can't remember which one but he was talking about like uh the differences in, for example, that, like, m with Modern World of Warcraft, that solo play is much more feasible. Yeah. Is one thing. Um, but at the same time, that, you know, it can be, like, that is a very different experience from, you know, the sort of necessitated Playing. major teamwork sort of stuff. Yeah, like, 
I, I played World of Warcraft for a couple months, like, in middle school. And the experience I had, and this is far from unique to my understanding, oh, yeah. was you join a guild where you don't mm -hmm. know really anybody. Yeah. And, uh, you work together because the game makes you. And then on your first big raid, you get yelled at by a man role-playing as an orc. <laughs> that, is, <laughs> that was my yeah. World of Warcraft experience. I mean, yeah, that often... Christian yes. McElroy's pacifist WoW run. Look. I will say... That sounds be, great. Being in a clan where I actually know people in Destiny is significantly, like, better as an experience, aside from uh, what I had going on before, because I got kicked out of my previous clan because I could I literally couldn't play because of the uh, the NAT type restrictions that were put on my uh, on my college Wi-Fi. That's so true. it made it kind of hard to actually be involved to the point where you know I got kicked for inactivity and like it. I kind of couldn't really even really say anything about it. That but, is unbearably shitty. I mean, I, I can't really blame them. They they were a big group, and yeah, they, they, they had... Don't they cap the amount of people you can have in a clan? Yeah, it's like maybe 50 or 75, I, something I, like that. I was saying, somebody. I was thinking more that just, like, the situation, period, is yeah. unbearably shitty. Like, yeah. like, not necessarily that they were being evil, awful people or anything, but it's like, the fact that... If, it's a big annoy. It's, it's just like, there are levels of just... This kind of sucks. Yeah. Also, uh, Zersk, you got here just after we finished talking about Illusion of Gaia. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's kind of funny was that, like, the thing you were talking about with the Incan, sh the Incan flying golden ship thing. Oh, no, it doesn't fly. I just said that by accident. Oh, the Incan golden ship yeah. thing was kind of reminding me of something in the thing I've been on and off writing for a really long time, mm -hmm. which was an idea I had involving, like, that because you have this overlap between various potential worlds and things, you have things that fall in and out of them that are, it's not even so much out of time per se as that you have technology levels of things that don't necessarily align mm -hmm. because certain civilizations might have moved at a different pace than others or worked with different things or because also magic factors into it using that to advance other things but sure. they've died out but their stuff still lies around i so like, in that vein illusion of gaia weirdly is not the first thing I have seen have like a solid gold ink and ship, and I don't know where yeah. that trope comes from. Uh, it comes from the fact that uh, the mythical city of El Dorado was in uh, Incan territory. Yeah, but why a ship? Uh, I assume it had something to do with the fact that um, the uh, like on the lake that you know. Uh, what was probably the city like the name El Dorado means the golden man uh, and it referred to when a priest would uh, sail out to the middle of the lake to implore Incan the lake gods that's a good point there's... yeah maybe um yeah and actually yeah it's yeah there's a lot of interesting stuff oh and also the seven cities of gold are in the same supposedly in the same area it's like there are a lot of legends about it because of just how much gold and silver there was Trimo compared to a lot of other Yiddish. places. Alright, fuck it. Trevor mode. Uh, dab? Yes. Um, Honestly, though. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Video games and such. Gosh, yeah. the walking turrets are cool. They are really good. I think I like them better than the regular ones. <laughs> but, um... What was I going to... Oh, yeah! So, like, on a non-game-related note, 
I don't normally mm -hmm. just like wholesale steal bits from other shows, but we uh -huh. need to talk. And I and I heard, learned this via the most recent episode of my brother, my brother and me. All right. Um. Burger King has a sandwich that they're rolling out, and they hired... Hey, what is that noise? Uh, it's on Trey's end. Um? It's like... There are people talking or, loudly or and like tinnily. A, like a radio program or something. Kennedy, turn your, uh... Your thing down. Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry. I didn't mean to nah. rain nah, on the uh, the the whatever family uh, stuff. But um, you're you're fine. Okay. But um, yeah. So like they they've unveiled a new sandwich, and they hired a a trance medium, like one of those people who uh like claims to be able to have ghosts possess them to test uh, the sandwich what like they Why? had they had this person allegedly be possessed by ghosts so that he could feed the ghosts the burger why <laughs> because because capitalism is in its death throes i don't know hello chorus mastery is this the, uh, is this, like, peak capitalism or nadir capitalism, I though? don't know. Like, I almost respect it because of how fucking stupid it is. I mean, it's just, uh, like... But, like, at the you're same trying to promote time, it through ghosts? Like, the funny thing, the funny thing, you read the press release, and most of the ghosts don't have anything nice to say about the burger. That's weird. One of them was like, I don't get it. I'm paraphrasing. One of them was like, I don't get it. And then another one, to uh, directly quote, simply said, this is filth. <laughs> <laughs> Which, just like, abandoned the venture at that point, maybe? The ghosts don't like Burger. The ghost doesn't. The, the ghost does not want the burger. Uh, is that their impossible burger or something? No, it was. They. It's like a fucking the Halloween hamburger with white yeah, buns. Yeah, or like, huh? Burger angry. A burger that will protect you from ghosts. So like, they've done weird Halloween shit for a while now. Like last year, it was like. We scientifically engineered a burger that will give you nightmares. And this was somehow supposed to make you want to buy the burger. That sounds at least provocative. <laughs> it's very challenging. Except that all fast food? I mean, not intentionally, at least. I mean, me no, that's when the you think about it. No, this is even if you don't think about it, it will give you nightmares. I assume. It's provocative. It gets the people going. The people going. Uh, better. Better. Yes. Man, Through the Wire came on on the radio today on the way for uh, my my mom and I up to Virginia. And we we were just sitting there enjoying the, the moment of enjoying Kanye pre-everything. Yeah. Yeah. White burger for white people. Hmm. White burger for white people. Yeah, like oh, I God. think I think that's actually the burger that they did last year, if I'm not mistaken. But Burger King has done many strange things with dyed foods over the years. Does anybody remember when they offered like green ketchup as a Shrek tie-in? Because that was a thing. Yeah, I do vaguely remember <laughs> that. That frightened me. Yeah. Um, although you can make, in theory, you can make naturally green ketchup, but you'd have to use like tomatillos. You can, or something. yeah, you can, you can use like a, 
Like, a lot of people don't know this. Ketchup does not have to be tomato-based. You can make That's ketchup also out true. of most vegetables. Yeah, but at the same time, if you're talking tomato ketchup, you can still make it out of, like, tomatillos. Or oh, there sure. are green and yellow tomatoes. There are actually purple tomatoes. Hell yeah, purple ketchup. Ketchup is yeah. king. Yeah, God. The Easy like, squeeze. Yeah, like, you could make... And I mean, but, like... Like, ketchup, the word comes from... It refers to a... an, Like, something like an eggplant-based fish sauce. Yeah, like that... Like, the original ketchup was eggplant-based. Um, yeah, it's and like... In, it's, in certain in certain parts of the world, a banana ketchup is a big thing. Uh -huh. I don't know what it okay, tastes that's... like. I imagine it tastes a bit like bananas. Mmm. Mushroom mm. ketchup is a thing in England, I think. That's not surprising, because that sounds like a very English thing. <laughs> I actually like ketchup. I don't like it on many things. It's basically only good for fries, but... I, I like it on ketchup fries. on, like, you know, like fries, burgers, that sort of thing. Yeah. But it... And, like, occasionally, you know, like, uh... Like chicken tenders, so, that kind of thing. So, Zersk, if I just, like... When we inevitably do our powerful meetup, which will uh, signal the end times that begun, uh, can I just, like, bring a bottle of ketchup so I can scare you if I need to? <laughs> I would like to meet Zersk. That would be Singing nice. the song that ends the universe. With our seven mouths. <laughs> it's like... Oh god. It smells? It's ketchup! I mean, it does. It is. It is like a Maybe combination if you, like, of. Stick your nose of, right in the bottleneck. But, like, it's a combination of, like, crushed savory fruit, sugar, and vinegar. This is it the does wildest conversation I have ever been witness oh, to. Oh, yeah, and salt. So it's perpetually in some weird chemical reaction. They like. don't. Ketchup doesn't. Like, like, it has an odor if you, like, get in there, but it doesn't, oh, like... Oh, also, if it, also it if you stink. leave it out or it dries on something, it is the most disgusting substance oh, known to man. Okay, y yeah, if you do that, <laughs> just don't do that, though. Yeah, I mean, the thing is that I'm saying this as someone who likes ketchup. Smells uh, to like a point. my doom. Like, the fact is that it is, it is a good... It is a good condiment that is also, when you start thinking about it, really pretty gross. I think that's true of most condiments. I mean, true hey, point, like... Shredney, you live in Pennsylvania. Have you ever had a, yeah. have you ever had horsey butter? What is that? Butter, but, like, there's horseradish stuff in it. Nay. I have not, but I have had that like horseradish. A, we have a thing of horseradish sauce in my house. It's it's basically just like uh, thicker horseradish, which is meant to be spread okay. on like biscuits and stuff. If you want to talk can... about like pungent condiments, we can start with horseradish. Oh radish yeah, and I can imagine. Things. I love that the Japanese word for horseradish literally just means Western wasabi. Yeah? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It, it's good. It is a good thing. Y yeah. I, I that, appreciate that. That's that's correct. Trey, what's your yeah, favorite it's... condiment? Yeah. Uh, Japanese yum yum sauce. What is that? It's like a, a sweet, like, mayonnaise-esque, uh, like, spread that, uh, that's typically served at like hibachi restaurants but is also very good with seafood and steak hmm Interesting. okay i've never heard of that uh i think i have um there's there is there is spicy mayonnaise which is served with sushi which is really really quite nice really like a lot of the mayonnaise variants like aioli which is really the precursor to mayonnaise but the main difference is that it has garlic in it the um, funny thing oh. is i hate mayo I cannot stand it. Like, with every fiber of my being, I hate mayonnaise. Mayonnaise uh, is, like, 
it has it, a bad rep, and because I can't eat it, I don't know how deserved said rep is. It's, uh, it is, it is something that needs to be used sparingly and precisely. Hmm. I'd agree with that. Like, I think that, you know, mayonnaise can be really good on certain things, especially in combination please, with, like, ketchup or something. Please don't fight or about in, mayo in my cat. Or in the case of aioli, like, aioli, you can do all kinds of things with it. But, Just um, egg sauce. Hmm. I mean, it is. It's egg and oil, like mayonnaise is. Can we talk about aioli. those horrible Miracle Whip commercials they used to run where they tried to portray Miracle Whip is a little scary. Miracle Whip as like a cool counterculture thing. Which oh, is yeah, maybe was... the polar opposite of what mayonnaise is. It's the polar opposite of what Miracle Whip Miracle is at the very Whip, least. Yeah. I mean mayonnaise is still pretty like Mayonnaise is just mayonnaise. It's it just has mayonnaise. no it has no cultural content. Wait, sir, you're not, like... Aside from being the official condiment of white people everywhere? I don't even I know if it so. is that. I don't... It like, is, is mayonnaise European? Like, I assume so? It is. Because it's got a French name? Uh, yeah, it refers... To, it's, uh, sauce mayonnaise. It, it's... It was prepared... It's... It was originally Sorry, used... Sorry, do you mean oh, sauce mayonnaise? <laughs> no. I mean, <laughs> sauce... I mean, sauce mayonnaise. It's like a... Uh, it's like... I can't remember what dish it was, like, made with. But really, again, it's just aioli without the garlic. And it, they stole it from the Italians. And oh. aioli is... But, like, most things with garlic in them are just vehicles to get you garlic. It's like peanut butter in that way. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, pretty much, yeah. Like, aioli is kind of garlic delivery. Um, but it has other things, often has other things in it, like, you know, Does you Does peanut put... butter count as a condiment? I don't know. That's such yes. a good question, and I don't... Yes. But peanut, you can just, like, eat that peanut butter. I mean, to be fair, you can do that with various other condiments. In theory, you can just eat chutney, you can just eat relish. What the fuck is chutney? <laughs> chutney is... Sounds like a British guy who... Like, no, it's a. It is a. Um, it is from South on. Asia. Peanut India. butter would be my favorite condiment Some... if it were a condiment, but um, I don't know if I can definitively say that it like, is one or not. Generally, yeah. hmm. it's a spread. It's like how cream cheese well, is. Well, yeah, like, like well, yeah, cream cheese. But I, I, I guess it would qualify spreads under condiments is the thing. But like, yeah, chutney is. It's usually a mix of a couple different things. Get um, usually based on some, like, based on a preserve of some sort, quite often mango. I didn't say the food was British, Zersk. I said the, I said the word sounds like a British guy's name, which I think it does. I mean, fair. But it is really, it's a, it's a British pronunciation slash spelling of an Indian word. I'm not sure from uh. what language. Um... My favorite condiment might be black ranch dip, which is a thing they have in hmm. Popeyes. I don't normally like ranch huh. that much, but I like that. What dip. is black ranch dip? I don't know what is different about it from regular ranch, but I know they're not the same. It's more hmm. it's got like a yellower color, and it's a bit thicker, and it has a bit of oh, a sharper okay. taste. The condiment I use most often is barbecue sauce. Barbecue but as far good. as far as like ones that I would consider my actual favorite, yum yum sauce is up there. And then I'd also probably put cane sauce from Raising Canes. Cane sauce hmm. is very good. I don't I've know, never yeah. been to Raising Canes. I don't know what cane sauce is. I think it's like a mayonnaise based blend of ketchup and uh, like either horseradish or Worcestershire sauce. Once I served sense. quesadillas to a 90-year-old woman and when I came back, she said, I hate this Chinese food. Beautiful. Along with some specific, like, spices that they put in there. I, I, I don't know. 
Um, either way, it's better than Zaxby's variant of the same idea because Zaxby's has like the issue of their blend being prepackaged, whereas uh, Kane's is made like naturally in the store. Yeah, they actually like, blend it there. Yeah. I uh, this is bugging me now. I'm gonna look it up. I'm gonna do an investigate. What uh, so... is Kane's sauce? So actually, I think, well, I personally really like pickle relish, actually. Really? Although pepper relish is also good. Um, uh, that's an interesting choice. An ex-employee yeah, like, of the kitchen described, the ble- described it as a blend of mayo, ketchup, Worcestershire sauce, black pepper, and garlic powder. Yep. Hmm. Doesn't sound, that sounds tasty. It doesn't sound like it's too off. If you if you threw some like like you know hot pepper relish into that that would be ooh that'd be delicious. You know what else is delicious, Fredney? What? Irony. Yeah, yeah, it Tasty. quite often is. Um, I have never been to a Zaxby's. What is the uh, what what does the vibe say about? Nutella. Uh, Nutella. I've however. never had Nutella. Nutella is fine. I occasionally have eaten it on, as a it. sandwich. Yeah. Hmm. It is like it is a condiment in the same way that peanut, that creamy peanut butter is a condiment. Is hummus right. a condiment? Hmm. Yes. In the same way that any other spread is a condiment. I feel like this gets into dicey territory, I just had though. Hummus. There's, okay, if we're, there's a, gonna, if, there's if we're a, gonna consider spreads a separate thing from condiments, then then hummus is a spread, yeah. Nutella is a spread, cream peanut cheese butter. is a spread, peanut butter is cream a spread. Cheese. Like the thing, the thing that gets me is like jam. Like, but then jam is often considered a condiment. There's chunky spreads, though. Yeah, that's the thing. That's what. That's the thing. A condiment is just a thing that you add on to another thing, and that's why I'm saying with spreads is that, strictly speaking, they're a form of condiment. It's just that how how important they are to any given thing you put on them varies. Like whether it's meant right. to heighten the flavor or to be the main focus does vary. But, like, okay, so, like, if you had a candy made out of peanut butter, obviously at that point it is no longer an accessory to anything else. It's just Well, yeah, food. but at, but at the same time, like, you can do that with the key things that can make up a condiment. Right. Like, like I guess I just... Spaghetti, like, like a, a spaghetti sauce, you could call it a condiment, but it is the focus of a dish. But at the same time, people do eat things that are like spaghetti, but with other accompaniments. Yes, but then on the other way around, there are stews, which, you know, the line between a stew and a sauce can be vague when it's chunky enough. You're right. Like, I suppose that a stew is in many ways just all condiments. Exactly. And that's my point about why I generally would say that spreads are a subset of, but kind of a weird gray area version of condiments. Well... But that I'm, they can be, like, strictly condiments... I'm living or, a very confused existence right now. <laughs> I mean, or they can... They kind of run that, like, line between condiments and fillings. You know what I mean? Yeah. Fillings right. are also, um, like, another thing. Folks, we're gonna switch over to the Binding of Isaac in a second here. Before that... We're all going to take breaks to recalibrate. Uh, and I'm Run the ads! Back. Yes. You two do need to be aware that this will still be on the VOD. <laughs> Just so you know. Oh, so no. Don't, don't like, I don't know, uh, go on a rant against a religious minority or something. <clears throat> None of that. Oh, gosh. Can you get me some mango akar? Yeah, sure. Here's your here here's how I'm gonna get the money to do that, sirs. And wait, it didn't do it. 
There we go, okay. It takes a second to load up. I am going to go use the facilities and get water. Um, and then I will be back. Do do do. I'm back. Hello. Wait, I need to actually sit down and put my headphones on before I say that. Ah. Hello. Hello. What's the uh what's the what's the issues? We got pri animated pride emotes, that's cool. Neat. Um oh, <laughs> I just wanted to It's like a summary of the ad break subway, a monitor without boundaries. <laughs> It's, it's a video. Hey, it's uh, death, you, death, you... death Stranding for the Switch. <laughs> would you be able to uh, turn on the uh, screen share now? Yes. Screen Neat. share. Hopefully, anyway. It should work. Yes, I don't know why okay. I um, but, uh, yeah, I maintain if we, if we get any funny ads, you guys gotta tell me. Wow, like, I ran a two-minute ad break, and that took me almost six minutes to do. I don't know. Maybe I'll run three-minute ads from now on. Uh, you were trying out the cheering function. I see. Oh, yeah. Thank you for the bits. Woo! Okay, I so... still don't know how bits work. They've been implemented on Twitch for, like, two or three years at this point. Still no idea. <laughs> They've been implemented on Twitch for, I thought, longer than that. 
ads aren't playing. Well, hmm, like, even if you turn it off, sometimes just having an ad blocker does not work. Um, hmm. And that's not you. That's sometimes Twitch just doesn't have any ads to serve you. So it just won't do it. It's weird. Yeah. But anyway, uh, so I was going to ask something really important. Uh -huh. So we've talked about albums that, you know, are important to us and, you know, albums that are like the potentially the best of the past decade. So most of us, you know, have a certain fondness for people rambling about popular music. What do you think are the worst popular songs of the past 10 years? I'm going to hit you with a hot take right off the bat. I fucking okay. hate Happy by Pharrell. Hmm. Cannot stand that song at all. I'm not a huge fan, at, but while I don't have nearly that level of ire for it, I can understand why it would drive you nuts, I think. But I would like you to elaborate. It's just, like, I just can't explain it. It just grates on me in a way like very few other songs do. Wow, we got a weird start. Also, the game seems weirdly loud. Let me... Huh. Yeah, it's a little bit... It's a little bit too loud. I mean, I, I can't hear it, but, yeah, you know. But, like, on my no, end. I, ble I, even, I believe you. I, I do believe you. <laughs> I don't even know if it was the audience. But yeah, like, I really don't like Happy by Pharrell. Yeah, it's, uh, like, uh, there, it, there is something a little, like, m a little much about it. Yeah. That's the like way to put it, I think. You know, your positivity fills me with negativity. <laughs> like, I'm usually, I'm usually into, like, happy go lucky songs. Like, I like fucking Call Me Maybe, that kind of thing. Yeah, but it's, like... It's it's just there's not a lot to it is the thing, uh -huh. I guess. Yeah, Zerf is and gonna I, say who she thinks that ha who she thought that happy was by, and I'm going to lose my mind when she does, because it's always the wildest shit. Go ahead, Zerf. You have the floor. The guy who made Rockefeller Skank. You thought it was Boy by. Slim? You thought it was by Fat Boy Slim. <laughs> Sirs, I love you, but I am going to kill you. What? <laughs> Wait, like, like, Fat Boy Slim, when was the last time he released music? Is Fat Boy Slim still alive? <laughs> yeah, I was wondering that too. <laughs> like, is he still. I, I think he might be, but, like, I don't know what he's doing. Which dice room is this? D10. Does absolutely nothing for me. Cool. Uh, uh so. But yeah, what's let, let let Trey do one. Trey. Oh yeah. Okay. Trey man. Uh, let's see. You have. Uh. Gosh. I'm trying to think of like I'm looking at I'm looking at the the ones that have gotten like number one of the 2010s to mm -hmm. try to see if like any of them are ones that I very distinctly dislike and you know I I feel like I feel like going for Drake is a little too easy because oh, like no, please I insist <laughs> so my my thing is that like sonically speaking a lot of his stuff isn't terrible but lyrically speaking, god damn, the dude, like, really has, like, just the heaviest inferiority complex. Yeah. Especially, especially in the case of Hotline Bling. Like, less um, so for some... Yeah, I don't like Hotline less Bling. Less so for like... some of his other ones, but, like, god. It's it's a good song that's marred by the fact Actually, that he's... I'm my, upset. My, well, I'm upset is real bad. I don't know how high that chart is, though. Um, uh, it... I think it charted enough to technically yeah, be a no, it's, hit. It's a it's a valuable and a valid valid entry. Um, my least favorite Drake song that was like super popular, at least, might actually be "Hold On, We're Going Home." I really. Don't I was like about it. to say that it's like song a, has an weird, icky 
undertone to it. And that's not even why. Like, if, if it, it, if he was just fucking reciting the alphabet, I still wouldn't like it. I just don't like how it sounds. That's fair. It's kind of got this it is weird, the most... like, half speed house song vibe going on. Hmm. Yeah. I, I guess I can see that. I actually don't mind that one too much, sonically speaking. Yeah. I, I, mean, I like, yeah. haven't paid a ton of attention to the lyrics with it, but, like, I kind of figure that it's it's probably in that same vein where it's one of those ones that's okay when you're listening to it, but then you go to, go to the lyrics and go, eh, I don't know about that. Like, it's far from the worst of his songs in that vein. Yeah. But like, it's just, still a little sketch. I just don't yeah. care for it. <laughs> I, I um, totally understand. I don't particularly... We could I, I we feel, could make this entire segment about Drake songs, honestly. I mean, true. <laughs> like, there are like, there are Drake songs I like. I like, um, fucking... Why am I blanking on the name now? What's the one that came out last year? Nice for, uh, nice what? for nice what? Nice for what? Yeah, I like Nice for what. Nice for what is a damn good song. Yeah, Nice for what's good. Uh, um, he didn't write it, he... but you know, whatever. Yeah, um, but I mean, like, still credit where credit is due. Like, he did a bring one. a decent amount of charisma. Yeah, to that's it. a good one. He, like, I like I like his more up tempo stuff. His more up tempo stuff is fine. It's also like in like because of the way that it has like awkward progression kind of it's like this weird vamp it's like actually it's basically it's modal it's, it's kind of quirky it's an interesting song i don't remember who produced that that might have been a done by his uh, his in-house man 40 should be or that might be somebody else I yeah but, um, um i yeah it's nice i mean uh, everyone knows that it's based on a sample by yeah. lauren hill lauren hill sample but that's no secret. Yeah, Let's I go mean, back like, to 2014. Yeah. What is there? Happy was the number one song of that year. And um, actually, you know what I'm thinking? You know what I'm wondering about Happy? I had a really <laughs> shitty 2014. I wonder if that contributed oh. to my dislike of the song. <laughs> oh, I totally understand that. It, yeah. it also, it was one of the songs they played at the dollar store that I worked at, which had a grand total of four songs that they put on their rotation. Okay, how about almost any single that Eminem managed to chart in the last 10 years? Have there been any good ones? I can't think of any. Yeah, pretty much. How, that's how long ago feeling. was Love, Love the Way You Like? Is that one? I think that's from okay. like 2009 or Necessarily something. Necessarily a bad song, but... No, that's that. Like... I would say that one's fine. It's just, it has, uh, it has problems, but it's fine. Actually, uh, 2010. So Mon technically it counts. Monster was okay. Yeah, I, I'm great, just saying almost right. every song yeah. that he charted yeah, no. in the it last ten years. It we're turns definitely... out Eminem and Rihanna isn't a bad co yeah. uh, like, collaborative effort. Uh, like, Lighters. Ugh. Lighters is not very good, no. Technically, um, that's oh, Bad Meets Evil, but Eminem is part of the group. Yeah, so but, the, but the fact works. is, you know, yeah. he's one of the things that makes it really oh, found found unbearable. another bad one yeah oh um you can probably figure it out just because like uh i i have a very todd in the shadows has like a very distinct hatred of this man and so do i but goddamn loyal by chris brown i could not escape oh fuck it. that oh uh, fuck that God. motherfucker just chris just brown like, like chris brown is somebody who i don't think his music actually sounds particularly bad but he's just such a shitty person. And it leaks through into his music is yeah. the thing. Like, his lyrics are... Uh... And his sneering intonation when he sings, he comes off like a brain douchebag even when he's, like, you know... I will not, never forgive you know? the fact that one of, like, the only mainstream appearances by Buster Rhymes on the Hot One yeah. in the past 10 years was on fucking Look At Me Now. Which is a Which particularly... Is not a good song. It's yeah. just that Buster Rhymes has a good verse on it. Yeah, he difference. has a good verse on a song <laughs> that is not very good. 
and it's like one of the very few things that is at all good about that song. One that's one that's charming in its badness is freaking Watch Me by goddamn Silent Hill. Okay, yeah, that's that's like almost <laughs> I okay, I used to almost, know yeah. a guy who was in like a garage rock band called Atomic Fireball. And they uh-huh. did a cover of that at one of their shows once. And oh, I man. wish to God that that was a video a recording that I could pull up. Because it was, like, the funniest shit of all time. Oh, man. Do the stanky leg, but it's but it's a garage That's a band. different song. No, it... No, it, there it is does, a bit. Does, does, he, does, does he tell you to do... Okay, yeah. There's yeah. just a he bunch of other songs dancing. that tell you to dance. It's it's basically just a bad compilation of um, all of the all the 2006 uh, dances put together with whatever was popular back in 2015. Yeah. The whip, the whip uh, and the nay nay mostly, and that uh, for, turned into a track. For the record, I am with Jane as being one of the few people who doesn't dislike "Teach Me How to Doggy." Yeah, I think I think the like I think most jerk music is like at least okay. Yeah, it's like, it's, I mean, I get, like, why it annoys people, but at the same time, I just kind of, I like stuff that's heavily percussion-focused and minimalistic to, like, that extreme was, degree, and it it's kind of hypnotic. a reference to the Dougie in the Mabim Bam episode I listened to earlier, because <laughs> Griffin was talking about... It's a really... It's not a particularly interesting dance move. It's not. Is the thing. It's, just, it's, it's like, also. I just for fucking remembered this. Fresh there's a fucking, my Dougie. Fresh there's a fucking, my Dougie. Uh, fresh my Dougie. I think it's a Live Joe Budden verse on Frank uh, on a fucking French Montana's first album, where he hmm. says, "I'm gonna teach you how to Douglas," which is the. <laughs> Stupidest fucking lyric of all time. I respect how dumb that line is. I respect it. Oh no, it's just so right? bad. Yeah. Um. So what oh, happened uh, with Coco was that oh, yeah. I, I was, uh, I was on a like visit to a school that was giving me like a scholarship or whatever as like uh, a way to try to uh, get me to their college and like so they they let us stay in the dorms for for a, a couple of nights in the uh, for the weekend that we were there and what ended up happening was that somebody in the in the hallway that I was like sleeping in, at like 11 30 12 at night was pretty much just like blasting coco on repeat for <laughs> maybe, maybe hour and a half like so what, what, what? <laughs> so Probably I'm... while do, you wonder if they were doing cocaine while doing that so i'm i'm here trying to sleep because i i've been traveling all day to this school oh in virginia and God. and i'm exhausted yeah. out of my out of my head and in the in the back of my head like throughout even with the door closed and like underneath the covers oh, no. it's just goddamn i'm, I'm in love with, with the golf go. god that's horrible but in but hindsight, extremely funny. It's very funny. It's very I, funny. That reminds but... me, we had a roommate, like a downstairs roommate for a while. He's moved out since. But uh, the one day he just played uh, that fucking, what is the name of that goddamn Juice World song? Uh, the one with the Sting sample. Lucid Dreams. Lucid Dreams. Oh, yeah. He played it, like, 40 times in a row. Cranked so loud that, like, my teeth were vibrating from the bass. Oh, Jesus. At, like, and the weird thing is, if that had happened at, like, 3 a.m., that's one thing. This was at, like, 
2 p.m. in the afternoon. I guess he got broken up with and was real salty about it. I him. suppose so. <laughs> like... I mean real salty, it's because just... that song... Let's, like, that song is... It's oh, not that a good song. piece of music, no. No, I mean, like, I actually do not hate it as much as some people do, but I... It is... The lyrics are fucking rank. Yeah. That's really the bigger problem, I guess. You guys ever think about I mean, the it's... fact that Juice World decided to call his first album Death Race to Love? Um, De uh, yeah, yeah. I thought it was I Death Race that's... for Love. Te technically, I think it counts as his second commercial release because his first one was Goodbye and Good Riddance. Right. Fair. I only Which know is that. also I only like, know that because of my brother. He's like a, he's like the he's like the you know he's like the rap equivalent or sort of rap like trap soul quote unquote equivalent of like those whiny vaguely misogynistic emo boys. Yeah. Like. Yeah. That very particular flavor of like you know, like, you know, douchey, uh, former hardcore guy, <laughs> playing his acoustic guitar and talking about his feelings, as if he's the first person to have ever felt them. It's it's a very familiar trope in popular music, uh, and I uh, hate that the 2010s second half has been dominated by it leaking into rap for some reason. I mean... It's because it's like, all the... all the sad black boys that were listening to Fall Out Boy at the age of 12 are now old enough to make their own music. Yeah, and it's... So? And it's the ones... It's the ones who were too... I know this because I was one. <laughs> it's also... Uh, oh, yeah. I mean, but it's also like... I mean, the mean answer, and this is not shade at you, this is shade at these guys, is like, is that these these were the guys who were like, you know, wanted to be edgy, but weren't like edgy enough to like, listen to like, metal or something. Or like you know, Nine Inch Nails, you know? Like, I mean, like, Nine Inch Nails was hard as, as hard as they got. Yeah. You know, like... Hey. Do you think I, mean, I should start a Nine Inch Nails parody band called Eight and Three Quarters Inch Nails? Eight and a Half Inch Nails, but every album cover you do is a Fellini reference. What does that mean? Federico Fellini, the filmmaker. Or no, it would be Michael Antonioni was Fred Eight me, and you half. know I don't watch movies. <laughs> What's a film? Never seen one. Oh, uh, like... 22.85 centimeter nails. There we go. Uh... Like... Oh god, what would it be? It would be like, uh... Eight... Uh... Is it in? Are the, the equivalent of... Or what? what is it? Or show? Are the equivalent of inches in Japanese measurement? Shredney? Yes? I'm gonna throw a brick at your car. I don't... That would be my mom's car. Don't be a dick, Jane. <laughs> Don't be rude so, to my mom. So, as mentioned in the chat, I feel like I'm okay with, like, even Charlie Puth's older, older stuff these days because he has gone on record as saying that it is terrible. Hey, I Haru, mean, yeah. Hold on, but, like, guys. We have, to, we have to put a pause on this conversation. I need to ask our good friend for Root Specs. A very important question. Haru, are you yeah. still at the axe throwing thing? Yes, also, we're playing Bible games for nerds. <laughs> You're playing Bible games for nerds! Uh, you kids okay. are nerds, I was, are I was deeply concerned that you were watching our live stream from an axe throwing competition. And I was only concerned because you didn't immediately tell us that, because it would have been the best place anyone had ever watched our show from. I mean, yeah, fair. Although I did call a in video. 
it from a moving car once. That's true. I called. I called in from a concert at one point. I think. I, I, I believe so. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that. Uh, yeah. We need oh, somebody to like good... go to Antarctica and call in though. <laughs> Uh, like, I know someone who actually has been to Antarctica. Like, uh, Nico from them. Uh, she, uh, went on an expedition to Antarctica as part of her geology, uh, studies. What the fuck? I want to go to Antarctica. Uh, no, I don't. I would hate it there. I'm pretty I'm sure she also reviewed a place further us. than the universe or is planning on it? I can't remember. Good. Um, it's a good show and it's about Antarctica. Reviewed by an ac a person who's actually been to Antarctica. Yeah. Most of the show doesn't take place in Antarctica. Minus I know, but still. But, you know, it's so. like actually... it would. St it's still fun. Is my yeah. Point. Like it's good. It's a good thing. Yo, but, I, I desperately need a new controller. The thumbsticks on this thing and the other one also are just like, it's not tenable anymore. Or I need to fix this one, but I don't know how to do but that. But see, Jane, that makes you get good. I'm gonna get uh -uh. good. A sensitivity really leaves something to be desired. Uh -uh. I'm gonna get good by knocking your head in. That sounded way more violent than I meant to. I was going for Beat like, on the Brett. I was Beat going for like Brett. joking Beat violence. on the Brett with a baseball bat. And oh, I yeah. Oh, yeah. Sorry. I'm gonna yeah. look up Yelp reviews of Antarctica. Please. <laughs> please share. It's cold, plain and simple. Bring lots of thermals, blankets, and other items to keep you warm. It doesn't warm up much. Stay out of the shade and you'll be alright. On the bright side, the penguins are easy to talk to. <laughs> I love that. That is pretty good. Fuck I yes. approve of this review. <laughs> newt newt indeed. Uh, amazing. Like, there's an XKCD comic about this. Hold on. First of all, this MV Ushaya does not go to the South Pole or anywhere near it. It sounds like you're reviewing the wrong place, dear Yelp customer. Okay, so... So in terms of... Uh, I was just thinking of, like... No, this is what the show is now. It's the Yelp reviews of... <sighs> God damn it. <laughs> What? I wanted to talk about horrible pop songs. You've Shred. robbed me. You've robbed me, Jane. Shred me. <laughs> horrible pop songs are forever. Antarctica is melting as we speak. Uh, I mean, <laughs> the thing about permafrost is that even I'm if, dead. like, half of it's gone, it'll still be there, at least in part. Ouch. Look up Yelp reviews of Beer Tawil? Where is that? Plays the forgotten. Fuck you. <laughs> the Sargasso Sea. There's no Yelp reviews That's of the Sargasso Sea. Also, I need to quickly update. I have a little notepad file now where I like write down the general topics we talk about. Oh. Because. Uh, Beer Tawil. Oh, there. Oh, huh. Weird. Like, um, gotta look for the, the video descriptions, which is a format that I stole from the Bim Ban. Also, I don't think like our VODs get any views, but you know, quality over quantity. Yeah, we have the best viewers if you really think about it. Because there are yeah. no good viewers on YouTube. I don't know where I'm going with this. <laughs> beer to What is the... Uh, tell me what the beer to beer is. Ta will. It, it is... It, uh, Neither Sudan... And I'm, now I'm looking it up. Neither is, Sudan like, or Egypt want it. That's beautiful. Yeah, it's an uninhabited 800 square mile area on the border between Egypt and Sudan. And it is spoken of in a relationship with the Halaib Triangle. And, uh, so it's kind of 
the the two form a sort of weird little like uh, parallelogram. Uh, hmm. And they're like, yeah, there's like no the prop. The That's reason why it is like it is six. is because of like issues with the political boundary between Egypt and Sudan established in 1899, and it is it is apparently <laughs> habitable. I really like, like the idea can live there. of something being anti-disputed. As Zersk wonderfully described it a moment ago. Like, mm -hmm. normally disputed territory is like both places want this. With the beer to will, it seems to be that neither place wants it. <laughs> Yeah, it gets really, really fucking hot there. Because nobody wants to take care of it, I guess? I mean, it's it's desert. It's a big patch of desert. But surely, like, what if there's something useful under there? Like, I don't know. Dinosaurs. Several organ individuals and organizations have attempted to claim it as a micronation. Yeah. You know. That is so good. Oh, it's just like this... There, But nobody fucking lives there. In order to claim the Hala'ib Triangle, they need to claim the Beer to Will is owned by the other country. Hey, guys, huh. good news. I'm an anarchist now. <laughs> yeah. I have just... decided that nations are stupid, and we need to get rid of them. Nations are stupid, and we do need to get rid of them, but I was already an anarchist so well fuck you shredney some of us i mean just i'm find... not saying that is a dig some... at you i'm some just of saying us just it's... find a real world example more convincing than i don't know murray bookchin <laughs> i love that you brought up murray bookchin he's the only anarchist writer i know because somebody on a discord server told me to google him once I didn't do that, but I have learned via osmosis that he is an anarchist thinker of some stripe. Uh, he's a, he was one of the uh, founders of modern green anarchism. Well, now I know. By the way, yeah. the person told me to Google this because I did not agree with their opinion on... What was it? Fucking... It was an anime, and I'm forgetting which one now. This might have been on the trigger cord back when that was still a so they show. so it was a pretentious like you know bougie anarchist person tried to like lecture probably <laughs> like the thing about telling somebody to google something is that it doesn't work if they just don't do that yeah like what like what was their comp was it a complaint or like that they liked something that you didn't or yes. what and I don't remember what the show was. So, huh. it, it might have been something to do with Code Chaos. But I like Code Chaos. I don't know. Maybe they didn't like Code Chaos? Maybe I that's what know. it was. This conversation happened like almost two years ago. I, I have only a vague memory of it. Uh, Earth, the show oh, was made Earth in Argentina. Made in Argentina. Seem like... Seems I've never like, seen uh, that though. I have no opinion on it. Uh, Earth made an Ar yeah, that's that's yeah, that's odd. I mean, but like yeah, Earth made an Arjuna is we should uh, we very should environmentalist -y and left wing. Hey Haru, I'm gonna kill you now. Don't kill Haru Specs. <laughs> that would be bad. <laughs> I like hanging out with him. Look, I can't threaten to eat people anymore, or people take it a weird way. So, it's not a deal sex with thing. It. We know that. You you know that, but you continue to pretend that it is. I mean, I I only do that for the giggles, Jim. Mm. Only for the, for the giggles. For the meme, I I'm do gonna, it for the vine, Jim. I do it for the, the vine. Week. Also, like, can we still call it doing it for the vine, even though it's TikTok now? Just yeah, I reckon it's still doing it for the TikTok exists, okay? TikTok is fine. 
Uh, Vine well, was maybe... mostly bad, too. People have forgotten that. I mean, yeah. Like, both of them have their serious ups Why does and downs. his name sound like a blockchain? Uh, who's, I don't know. I think it's Who's your because... favorite anarchist thinker? Mine is Murray Blockchain. Mori Blockchain. Mori Blockchain. Hey, can we talk about the fact that the and, blockchain uh, and, sounds like and, some kind of weapon? But and, it's not? and, oh, no, and Mori Blockchain and Kitty Crumpet Chin. This isn't it, shred me. I, I don't care. It's not, it's not it. I'm sorry. It's just, it's not. It isn't. It isn't it. I'm gonna have a character in a story that uses a blockchain as a weapon? Good! Reclaim the term. From the fucking... Nerds? Nerds, yes. Blockchain will solve all of our problems. I used to read, uh, r slash buttcoin back when I still used Reddit more than, like, once a month. <laughs> And I don't really have anything else to say about that, but that's a funny, funny name for, like, uh, people being stupid about cryptocurrency subreddit. Yeah. Buttcoin. <laughs> Classic. Buttcoin. Um. Yeah. Wow, the show's uh, only half over? I feel like we're so much later, like, so much further in. Yeah, it's kind of weird. Like, so apparently Egypt refers to the, um, uh, the Halayib Triangle as the Sudan Government Administration Area. They're just saying, Sudan, you can have it. You deal with this. Zerus, you can donate to me entirely in Bitcoin, and I will take it, but I will be upset about it. <laughs> I will accept it, but only passive-aggressively. I'll Passive use it to commission fan art of, of, like, pairings you don't like. Oh! Oh! Zersk, what is your least favorite ship that you would still draw probably, if given money? Probably some shit in Naruto. I didn't say I was going to commission Zersk to do it, although that would be, like, double ironic, I guess. Nart. And his son, Bort. <laughs> you guys ever think about how Naruto is a franchise that exists? Naruto. I mean, like, I know that it is, but I don't care. <laughs> well, Nart. Okay, anime critic. <sighs> don't Nart. you okay boomer me. Okay, like. anime critic. There's probably, like, in all seriousness, probably a Naruto stage play of some sort. Of some sort. People oh, actually no doubt. care about pop theater in Japan. It's crazy. Yeah. And, I mean, there are, like... At, at, oh, like, I don't remember how many for Sailor Moon. Like, a lot. There's, like, a... a quintillion of them. Somebody I follow on Twitter was live blogging uh, the Sailor Moon, like, vampire opera thing that was made, like, oh ten my. years ago. And that's fascinating. With some oh end of my. Evangelion shit, which uh, now that I've said that, I assume Marone will spontaneously generate out of thin air. Just... Okay, if Miron just appears because we mentioned Ava, well, we I'm to just mention, gonna... We have to mention Logic, also. Ava and, yes, and our our boy Bobby. Please stop calling him that, even ironically. <laughs> <laughs> Google I... Murray Bobby. <laughs> oh, no. Bobby, get in the Ava. Logic, get him the robot. Yeah, exactly. Or else Joyner Lucas will have to do it again. 
Oh no. <laughs> oh god. With terrible rap people, who's Ray? Who's Shinji? And who's Asuka? Hobson is Asuka. <laughs> because he's a. Because he's like. Because he's a jerk. <laughs> yeah, but like, Asuka actually has like. Look. Reasons for being a jerk. None of these castings are going to be flattering to the characters. We just need to accept that. Okay, fair enough. And then, uh, logic is Shinji. Logic is Shinji. Uh. Who's Ray? Who has, like, the least personality? Like. G Nash? Who I don't think even makes music anymore. <laughs> oh, God. Or, I mean, or G Easy. No, G Easy does cocaine, which is too. <clears throat> yeah, but I mean, Ray made. has like a weird dark side too. <laughs> to be fair. <laughs> you know what? Sure, G Easy is Ray. Does this like, make Eminem you know... Gendo? Eminem <laughs> <laughs> is Gendo. Oh my fucking god! Then who's Masato? Uh. Fuck. Who is Masato? Well, if if we're talking about the only person who's remotely like likable in this scenario, uh... Macklemore. <laughs> Fair enough. No, don't bring Ice Cube into this. He hasn't done anything to deserve this. Okay, who who is Royce to Five Nine in this scenario? Uh, he's the robot. You get inside of Royce to Five He's a giant mechanical Royce to Five Nine. The five no. the five nine no, part is kilometers. More... No, it instead actually of feet. does. It actually makes sense because the robot is Shinji's mom. I think we should stop talking about this now. <laughs> Royce to Five it's Nine. It's starting to nine make sense. Is, is Logic's mom? I think we killed Trey at some point. <laughs> it's Lil nah. Nas X Naruto! <laughs> yes! Yes! Then who's Sasuke? Uh. Juice World. <laughs> Why is okay, this fair working? Enough. He, does, he does look kind of like an extra from Naruto. Billy Ray Cyrus? No! Billy Ray Cyrus is Jiraiya in this situation, you fucking fool. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I know I'm right, and I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then who's, uh, what's-her-face with the pink hair? What's-her-face? Sakura? Yes. I don't know who's Lil Nas X dating. <laughs> Them, probably. Panini. Oh man. Panini from the song Panini. Oh man. But how much money do you think we'd have to blow to get Billy Ray, Billy Ray Cyrus to dress up as Jiraiya from Naruto? <clears throat> More than we have, unfortunately, I think is the answer. Sadly. No, I don't know very much about Naruto. We need Zerf to relay the knowledge so I can make the good. The good <sighs> okay, fun. so. Uh, Naruto gets is... with Hinata? Really? That surprises me. Okay, question. Who. Okay. Like, uh, is, is, is Mur still here? No, Mur went to bed like an hour ago, you. Oh. <laughs> Because I, because I was going to start saying, like, then who who in rap corresponds to the main cast of Hunter x Hunter? Which is large. We... We live in a society. <sighs> Rowdy boys marrying quiet girls. Leorio is great. I oh guess, my fucking god. I guess that is a stereotype, but, like, I just... What little I watched of the show, they barely interacted, from what I remember. I mean, it's a long show it's a long based show. on a long so, comic. Know, what do I know? 
It's not about to like, start that's having actual like, opinions on Naruto ships. That's sort of like, you know, like saying, oh, well, I don't remember that happening in Bleach. But then again, there is nothing worth remembering we that actually, happens in Bleach. We were having a voice call last night, and we discovered that there was a... Because, like, everybody in the call had watched Bleach, but not, like, much of it. So we discovered and it was all, that there was, like... All different parts. Yeah, we discovered that there was this entire arc that none of us knew about. And there was, like, a That's whole character. fantastic. Yeah, like, uh, I, I, have, I, have, I have, through Osmosis, and also watching that one long Super Eye Patch Wolf video, acquired more knowledge of Bleach than I will ever meet. I um, liked it, Rangiku for reasons. And that oh, also, like, Bleach starts off Bleach. as, like, kind of a knockoff of Yu Yu Hakusho's first arc. Yeah, it, that's... That sounds about right. Like, Wait, isn't the... the Yu Yu Hakusho guy make Hunter Hunter too? Yep. Yeah, that That's was weird. the thing that he went to right after uh, he. Uh, like he. Knowledge of Bleach. Listen, you never know when you're going to be challenged to a death riddle by a very, very nerdy troll. Yes. Where and if you all... do not know, if you cannot justify your bleach OTP, he will steal all your teeth. Oh man. Uh so like do, does never mind. I don't, don't worry know. about it. Hey, how are you guys doing? I mean there's that one guy who has like a wolf head that's uh, vaguely up my alley. Tread me? Yes. That's in Demon Slayer. That's probably also in Demon Slayer. Like, that's not an uncommon Wait, thing. it's a boar's head in Demon Slayer. Never mind. I know I won't be subjected to that due to a prophecy that I'll die in the midst of a trivia rap battle about Evangelion. <laughs> that's pretty good. You better start I mean, even in trivia rap battles. You're in one. Uh, so. Endgame hmm. Naruto relationships. Naruto, Hinata, Sakura, Sasuke, Shikum. I don't know who the rest of any of those people are. <laughs> or if I did know, I have forgotten. Naruto characters. That exist. Naruto characters, not even once. There, here are the Naruto characters. Nart, Sasuke... Uh, the guy with, like, a mask, like a, like a black cloth mask over most of Rock his Lee. face. Rock Lee. Uh, the Sand Ninja. Tsunade. And, uh, Jiraiya. Those are the Naruto characters. Isn't there also the, the guy who's, like, kind of an asshole to Rock Lee? Probably. And he's like, yeah, that hey, dude. Hey, Trey, how you holding up? One of the edgy dudes. I'm all right. Can't complain. <laughs> Just checking. Just like... Um, my sister turned the television on, so I don't want any of the... What's, uh, what's on TV? Uh, Disney Channel sitcom with uh, the... One of the aunts from <laughs> uh, Sabrina the Teenage Witch, the oh. classic version of it. Huh. She is the Neat. mother of the main character. Interesting. Or the grandmother of the wait, main character. Wait, I think. is that like is that like a character, like an in fiction relationship, or is it the actress? The mother and the daddy. Um, she's like the, she's like the grandma of the main character in the show. So it's it's the character, not the actress. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, just the character, not okay. the not I the see. actress. I was confused briefly. Yeah. See, like. Actually, wait, didn't Naruto, didn't Disney have the rights to the dub of Naruto for a little while? Like, for they aired, they, for, like Very aired rights. Very briefly in, like, 2012. What the fuck was up with that? Like, they uh, got the rights to Shippuden, actually. And they currently have the rights to Pokemon, actually. What? What? Pokemon and Inazuma 11 and Beyblade. What? That's their, 
That's their anime block on Disney XD. Don't they also have what? Yukai Watch? Uh, or at least I they used to. They did at one point. They've had Yokai Watch and Doraemon as well. Doraemon. Huh. What? Here's yeah. what I want, okay? I want Disney of America to fucking stop being cowards and to commission a dub of Fireball and air that. I want. Disney what is Fireball again? Put... What's up, Gray? I want Disney to put Pickle and Peanut on their streaming service, but we don't always get what we want sometimes. Yes. What that is, is a... also true. What is Fireball? Fireball was a short anime made by Disney of Japan. It is the mm. only work that its director ever did, and it is one of the weirdest fucking things I've ever seen in my life. Neat. Nice. It's... It almost seems like a fucking, like, parody of Nier Automata, but it came out, like, ten years before Nier Automata did. Well, then. The robot Hasune Miku, yes. The, the main character looks like a robot version of Hasune Miku. Huh. And the other main character okay. is, incidentally, named Gadakness. What the heck? It's... Maybe the... You've talked about this before, but I forgot about it's it. It's maybe the... the only anime. It's one of the few things that I've seen recently and not scored on my analyst, because what do you do with that? What do you do with a drunken sailor? <laughs> Put him in a longboat till he's sober. What the fuck is a longo? A longboat. Wait, does that mean that you're just like shipping him off to the ocean? No, put him in a long sh put him in a longboat till he's sober. The longboat is the one that like you know there's like the boats that go back and forth from shore. Yeah, but if you put him in there and he's drunk, he's just gonna drift out to sea. Well, no, he's still he's still a, it's still gonna be attached. Well, the thing is that they're putting. They're not putting him out with Shredney, these. I think this out song is seat. about clandestinely murdering a drunken man. No, it's no, it's putting him in a longboat while you're still in port because he's, you know, like you want to isolate him and have him vomit over something a little closer to the ocean. I just and hard saying that maybe the boat is on the ship. Look. Well, it's, it's like, or tied to the Listen, ship is the point. Listen, I'm wise to your game, and I'm telling you, you're trying to murder this man. What if he falls out because he's drunk? See, Zerus gets it. I mean, that's true, but, the, you know... That's clearly the intention. No... Uh... Well, maybe just it's a very, maybe it's a very crafty covering my face. in our respects. I'm, I'm covering my face in just, just no. Just no. 50 million just no. ways to kill a sailor is my favorite Netflix documentary. It, it's my favorite Paul Simon song. Yeah. Keel hauling. I... Uh, actually have a song that's subtitled that. You know what I have? You know what I have, Shredney? Mm-hmm. 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 Do you know mm -hmm. what I have? What do you have? A refreshing Diet Pepsi. That sounds nice. Um... You can call me Al is good. Um, Fifty ways to leave your li to leave your to lose your lover. Uh, leave your lose your lover. To leave is your loser. good, which is why I referenced it. It's a, it is a good song. Um, I I enjoy most of what I've heard by Paul Simon actually. So, yeah. Hey, 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 hey. Yeah. Saul Pyman. Saul Pyman. Saul Pyman. It's like the one time I didn't want the rock, but sure. Ball cello. 
Alright. Well, that was the Binding of Isaac. Let's see. Okay. Time for fisting. Yes. Is that why you wanted it back on the show so bad? So you <laughs> no, can say that? no, that's not why I wanted it back on the show. It's because I, like, enjoy watching you play it. I like this, this game. But at the same time, it does lend itself to horrible, horrible puns. Ooh. And not just sexual ones. Just, like, dumb ones in general. Hey, I'm sorry if you guys heard that horrible, like, piercing, cracking sound that just came through my headphones. I don't know what the fuck that was. I forgot that the but, uh... developer of this game was called Hoxaflixel. What a great name. That was Zersk? Okay. Alright, we need to get huh. the game capture set up. Uh, add new source. Fist. Fist. Fist of the North Star. Um, because we're feeling punchy today. Look out for fists. It's literally been so long since I played this that I don't actually remember if it supports controllers natively so i guess we'll find huh. out yo can i we're get we're gonna find out horizontal center thank you yeah all right and uh yes but um before we get started i'm going to run another ad roll because Do -do -do. i'm horrible and greedy once again, if we get any funny ads, you guys gotta tell me. Yeah. Also, let me update this thing. Okay. And you have to turn it into something that mercilessly dunks on Jane, okay? Hey. Let's all dunk hey. on Jane. It's sort of like all loving lane. Something that we've all gotta do. Hey. Fuck you. Thank you. Anyway, yeah, let me, uh, let me run this real quick. Oh. So we're gonna actually do it. There we go. Okay. We are now on ad time. I'll be right back. Do do do. Oh, I should probably use the restroom. Me and Julio down by the schoolyard. Do, 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 do. I come back to just <laughs> consider the consequences of vaping. Consider the consequences of vaping. Uh, 
Are you two still here? Hello. Hi. Did Shred me and go and get something? I assume he did. Anyway. <laughs> Your fast reflexes require a more advanced gaming setup. Uh, gosh. Also, uh, Eric, I, I tried to tell you this last time, but sometimes, like, depending on where you live, Twitch might just, like, not have ads to give you. So, like, don't, don't worry about it. Alright. Let's play Fisk. God, it has been a long time since I played this. Yes, I know how to play. I don't, I don't care. Alright. Let's go. But, uh, yeah. Twitch hates Toronto? Maybe. Like, again, it's just one of those things, like, sometimes Twitch does not have, uh, stuff. So, if you don't see any ads, do not worry about it. You have no idea what this is? This is Fist's Elimination Tower. It's, uh... Eliminated. It's a game. Oh, wow, alright. Oh, wow, that was special. Yeah. Yo! <laughs> Help. Um, yeah, it's just, you, uh, you got 25 guys, and your goal is to just stomp on all these weird bunny robot things, and get as far up the thing as you can. Yeah, see, it's a very simple game. This came out in 2017, and, like, nobody bought it, which is extremely upsetting to me. I'm just playing this on a D on a DualShock 4. I probably could play this just fine on my SNES controller. It's not a complicated game. Oh, no! Shredney, is, is the reason you like this game because you enjoy watching me fail? Is that it? No, I, I, I it's just, like... It's like, it's just that it's entertaining whether you succeed or you fail. How do you feel about it, Trey? I enjoy it. It is kind it's... of, you know, a banger. It's a groovy platformer. Yeah. It's very cute. This game's like $5, I think, by the way, if you want to pick it up. I did an Indie Bazaar episode about this, like, way back when I still did those fairly regularly. Yeah. Mm hmm I remember that. It's a good game. The eliminated graphics are very good. You can also make your own contestants, although you only get to use them once before they are uh, zeted. Which is like being yeeted, but one more. Uh-oh. There we go. Also, I apologize if you guys are hearing a little bit of doubling on the jumping sound. For reasons I have never been able to figure out, uh, the game likes to uh, play the jumping sound out of the controller speaker, but none of the other audio. Just that one. I actually don't hear the jumping sound at all, so it might, I assume it might be that, that it's, might just, be. it's just quiet and you can't. Yeah, it might not be picking up, so it might not be uh, audible to the audience. Yeah, you know. It's so like we're still game. Shapes and Forms sponsored by Danny Brown. Wait, what? Oh, um, the, the the thumbnail. Yes. Right, yeah. Yeah. Uh, we should we should change it to one of the uh, like one of the graphics for these amazing commercials people are apparently getting. What it like it was like what did you guys For get? standing. Like you guys got like gamer monitors and anti vaping ads? Is that what happened? <laughs> this past one? Again, I, I I'm just seeing a like some dearth standing here. Hmm. I'm just gonna refer to it as that because Has Hoxapixel made any games since? I have no idea. The very 2000... uh, so the fact is that like uh never mind I, i'm not gonna what, what's up and they really the... are they really are i thought for for a while they were horns but they're Fred ears knee. 
Sorry. It's okay. What what's up, Gray? Fans of the game's art uh, might be interested in another project that the that the main developer uh, worked on called Berserker. It's a webcomic that came out like I want to say a couple of years ago. Huh. Like that that was uh, one of the earlier projects before they transitioned into making video games. Interesting. Oh, I didn't know that yeah. actually. I uh, I don't know if Hacks of Flixel have been up to anything since this came out. I assume so, but I'm not yeah. sure. It's a good name for a webcomic. Excuse me. Tredney. <laughs> uh, I can't control my digestion. Well, I'm going to control it for you by murdering you. Please don't. Mm, I will, though. I'm doing surprisingly well for my first time back, I feel like. Zersk? Zersk. Burping ASMR is... No. We don't joke no. about ASMR here because of that one person we had that one time. Like, just like... Funnily enough, um, I knew an artist on Tumblr who was into burping. Shreddy. Yes. Why? Uh, I just, I mean, I just kind of did. But... Tumblr was a strange place, Jane. But, but why? Because it was Tumblr, Jane. It's just like that. What's wrong with your PC? Uh, ours? I forgot about the fall harder button, which is one of my favorite things in this game. Fall, fall harder. Oh, my llama character, yes. What's going on over there? <laughs> but, um, yeah. It's, yeah, it's fall too, but it's equal to falling. Fuck. Oh. I love how excited she gets when you, like... Die, yeah. Yeah. Like, also, I got just... the donkey again. I do. I love the donkey. The donkey is my friend, and now he's... I I forgot about the donkey, but that's very charming. Now you're a, a person Hello? with a donkey head. Win! I'm Win. You are. Hello. Hi! Hello! How are you? Hello! I'm alright. That's good. We're playing uh, Fist's Elimination Tower. Eliminated. Yes, you, and I don't uh, think Jane's doing all right, but also still dying a lot. Yeah. Did I? It's a I don't situation. know if I even knew you yet the last time I played this on stream. <laughs> I'm not entirely sure. When did you play it? Just like I think the last time I played this on show was like mid 2017. No, we would have known each other, I think. Yeah. I'm trying to do math. When did Me the too. server get created? That was 20. It was yeah, August that, of what year? That was also 2017. So yeah, we would have known each other. And I showed up in October of 2017. Yeah. So it would have been like about right, like right near this time that this. Uh, yeah. This was last on the show. Yeah, that was when um. Garen was more of a regular pair of presence oh, on the show. And I mean, I knew you before yeah, the server, yeah, but not but, like yeah. really. But anyway. Yeah, like like I was I don't think I was familiar with you at all before you arrived on the server. Um because I, I've just always I, I'm I I I got I wound up in this situation from being, like, person who knew Jane from very and Trey from very specific corners of the internet. Yes. Which I think were different corners of the internet. And also, you have a penchant for going along with just stuff. <laughs> yeah, I just roll with things. I'm gonna spin for prizes. I don't even remember how this mechanic works. You get, like, hats like, and shit. But it's just, like... I can't remember exactly how I wound up on the show other than, like... I think... I, I think you... 
you were essentially like, hey, you want to be on this show? Yeah, probably. Like, the first Shapes and Forms was very strange. Didn't we play fucking, um, Crypt Worlds or something? Yes! We played, like, I Enter the play Gungeon Crypt and Crypt Worlds. Oh, we should play Crypt Worlds again on this stream. I... <laughs> I don't know about that. No, I would really love to, just because it's... It's so fucking odd. It makes me happy. I don't know how I feel about Crypt Worlds, and I've played it, like, three times. Like, I mean, I don't even know how I feel about it, but I just find it enjoyable to watch people play it. When the Crypt World sequel comes out, is that an actual thing? That's I happening. mean, if it is, we we should. Absolutely. Oh, hey, Wynn. Oh, hey, Jane. You missed an important conversation earlier. Really? Uh, what rappers are what anime characters? Jane, I don't know. Listen. <gasps> you gotta. I don't know enough about rappers. You gotta. <laughs> I think Eminem is the Dr. Bear. <laughs> there you go. Is who? Dr. Bear from Sinfo Gear, which is not a compliment. <laughs> I, I am aware. But, uh, like, now that I recall, like, the name and, like, have the context, it's like, oh, yeah, that character. I wonder how He's many... also homophobic. Yes, that's true. Mm, how many times, yeah. like, mm. statistically, I feel like <laughs> Eminem has to be near the top in terms of random famous people we've made fun of on this show. Uh, we've, we've ma been making fun of Drake for a really long time. Yeah. Well, yeah. And, and Logic made... is, like, the recent big contender. Yeah, like, like, Logic is our official stream whipping boy. Like, we are just not nice you know. to... He's... We are not... We... we have done such terrible things to that poor man. <laughs> he doesn't make very good music. Well, the fact is that he... The problem is that everything that we've done to him is just stuff that he's done to himself, you know? And to my ears, in the case of Confessions of a Dangerous Mind. Yes, and, uh, and also things I've done to myself in the case of Supermarket. Look, that one was all you. Yeah, but you inspired me. There is a you. sequel to Crypt Worlds in the works? What the fuck? Okay, that's awesome, and we need to play it on stream when it comes out. We we will if I if I can get my hands on it. Fuck yes. That's that's. I I'm hyped. That would be a good thing to do for the hundredth uh, show. Yeah. Which is like we got like forty more, so they got they got time. Yes. So today, I uh -huh. used a proxy ordering service to order a Toho calendar. Excellent. Hmm. Neat. Because it has pretty art of Aya in it. I I mean hey, that Wynn. is an extremely valid. Which also thing. means I paid like thirty dollars for a calendar. Hey Win. Yeah. I don't know how to tell you this, but you're gay. I was yeah. about to say is like um, when you do realize that's extremely gay of you. All and right. Fuck it. I mean that as calendar a compliment. Mode. Um. Just okay. like. Okay. Yeah. Fuck it. Calendar mode. Yeah. <laughs> Cameo appearance from somebody. Ah, oh, Shreddy, don't whistle on stream. It was very bad for the microphone. Sorry. It's uh, okay. It was the it was the synth line to Death Grips the Fever. Ah yes, of course. Dun, dun, um, in case people dun. don't know what a proxy buying service is, it's like, say you want something from a Japanese website that only ships domestically to Japan. Um, in this case, Melon Books is where I'm getting the calendar. Uh huh. The a proxy buying service is they buy it for you 
get it shipped to them. Yeah. And then they ship mm -hmm. it, and then they do the international shipping. Yeah. It's that like, sounds. It's like. Oh my God! Sending I can get someone. comics that way. It's like sending someone to a grocery store to get stuff for you, basically. Except, instead of food, more elaborate. Instead of food, it's pictures of your wife. Yes. Yes. Um, <laughs> I don't think, I don't think any of Neko Jiru's characters qualify as my waifu, though. Who's Neko Jiru? Neko Jiru was an underground uh, manga author who, you know, the film Cat Soup. Yes. That yes. guy's based on her late work. Okay. Is that on her? I'm on uh, her. It, it might be. I know that like. It's been on YouTube on and off for years. Like, it's, you know, but it's like, it is one of my favorite short films ever. And her stuff, like, a lot of her earlier stuff is more like blunt social commentary with some weird <coughs> druggy shit thrown in. But, like, her later work is really what inspired that short film and is way more bizarre. And it's only really available in, like, French and Japanese. See. Yes, because, you, like, did, you did in French fact, translation. Uh, so, fun fact, they got Zersk to watch Pony Pony Dash the other day. Ooh! Uh, and she brought up that the cat god from Pony Pony Dash looks like a, uh, a cat soup character. Yeah, it probably is an homage to Nekojiru because there's also an homage to Nekojiru in the uh, art style that the switch in art style in Owari Monogatari where uh, like the uh, Oki and Araragi are talking. I and actually becomes... know the sequence you're talking about because I see that gif all the time. Yeah, that sequence I love that Oh wait, I, which characters? I think I might know what you're talking about. Uh, Oki and uh, Koyomi Araragi who's the main character. Oh, yeah, uh, I think is... I've seen that gif. I know who Ogi is because yeah. Ogi's, she's great. Ogi spooky. And also, oh. I've, I've watched a little bit of the first series. Like, Ogi, yeah, Ogi doesn't show up until way later, but when wait. she shows up or they show up, it's complicated. Um, wait, doesn't uh, Ogi show up at the very beginning of the series? No, no Ogi is. No, no wait, Ogi who's shows the... up in the second season? It's, uh, Hanakawa Hang on, who am I thinking of? Person that shows up and then, uh, There's Hanakawa. After. Who's the Hanakawa. one that's, like, really light? That's Sanjo Gahara. That's the... Oh. <laughs> The, the, with the, long, with the long hair. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, like okay. long purple hair is Senjo See, Gahara. I knew what Ugi looked like, and for some reason I forgot who showed up. Ogi is the one with the so, solid black eyes. Yeah, I know what she looks like because I love her design. <laughs> she does have a freaking great design. Um, and you know is also who else like. Has a great design? Who? You. <clears throat> Yo, I'm a hermit crab. But, uh, yeah, like, have a great design. actually, like, when Ogi Fuck. shows up, like, that point in the series is the point, I Fuck. think, where Monogatari goes from being, like, good to really, really good. Like, and it kind of, for me, just, like, not justifies, but kind of, like, uh, helps me get over a lot of the bullshit in the first third of this of the meta series let's go but yeah she's uh, she's a great character she's also an awful like the worst person and i got risk a dollar is good point Zersk. wait a great character who's just the worst so friska yeah kind of <laughs> like, not, no totally different totally different character but also, same principle. She's an awful person, but is fantastic. Are we gonna- do we have to bring up the fucking Komida slideshow? <laughs> Judas, the original Komida. <laughs> Who's Komida? Oh. <laughs> the fucker from Danganronpa 2. Oh yeah, that- oh, that fucking slideshow- oh jeez, the PowerPoint! Yeah! The fucking PowerPoint, god! 
the Judas, extreme. Judas, the original Kamida. Oh god. Uh, I'm having flashbacks. Why did you remind me? Because it's the best image series ever. It it it, it puts nails in my heart. Well, wow, Lala wants to know your location. Also, uh, when I actually forgot, you shouldn't be on the show anymore because I'm a capitalist now. Wait, but... <laughs> what? So that means, like, all of us have to leave now? I mean... Or at least Shredney does. I mean, I'm, I, I'm like... This is a joke I about have, me running ads. I have, I, I don't, I, I don't like capitalism, but my. You already had a subscriber function, and it doesn't make you yeah, any more capitalist. Yeah, than... no, but like. Also, you're not, you don't own Twitch. That's true. You don't have the means of production. I, you're I, not a capitalist. I'm just joking. Man. Well, okay, yeah. <laughs> by the formal like uh, Marxist and also, other, there are a couple other definitions like, of capitalist that work that way. Yeah. Apparently the ads we get are amazing, but like not in a good way. <laughs> there was the fucking anti-vaping PSA that Zers got. The anti-what? Vaping. Vaping. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, like somebody else got an ad for like a gamer monitor. <laughs> And the other day, when I was trying the function out, uh, somebody, somebody got, uh, like an ad for a Mexican comedian. <laughs> know the I'll consequences of vaping. Okay. When you gotta know the consequences of vaping. Consequences of vaping. Zerus, at any point in that ad, do they tell you what the consequences are? No? Excellent. Hey, Trey. Hey! Do you know the consequences of vaping? Uh, that you could possibly become addicted to nicotine. <laughs> I mean... Yeah, I was just saying the thing from the chat, though. <laughs> if you keep vaping, your lungs will become sentient. <laughs> <laughs> they'll become Princess Alice? And they'll crawl out of you. Understand the consequences of vaping. Uh... I was looking and found, uh... The, they actually did a comic about the game on huh. uh, on the Berserker website as like a as a way of promoting it. Interesting. Because it was on Steam Greenlight at one point. It was what are back we when. About? Uh, uh, Steam Greenlight was yes. a thing. Uh, Trey found out that the people who made this game also made a web comic uh. called Berserker. It's about a robot that's powered by beans. That's a good premise. Yeah. I don't know why, but that sounds like... Like the arch nemesis to Haro Specs. <laughs> <laughs> Haru, are you still here? How do you feel about the bee robot? The bee robot versus the ant tree? <laughs> Druid versus Berserker. Boing. B robot is what I am now. This game is like backwards down well. A little bit. Up well. Up well. Up well. The opposite of a well. Uh, a spring? <laughs> well, I mean, that's not really an Hi, opposite. Lexi. Hi, Lexi. <laughs> 22 Risk remain. Of rain. Oh no! I forgot to change the game name. Frisk a game. Frisk well, a rain. Well, the first Frisk of rain is a platformer. That's true, Frisk actually. Rain. No, this is Fist's Elimination Tower. I just forgot to change the game name because I'm a dunce. And I mean, to a certain extent, the second one is, but it's more of a third-person shooter. Yeah. Really. Yeah, it's got a little bit of platforming going on still. Yeah.
This elimination tower is fun. It's like five, ten bucks on Steam. So oh, I, I, I apologize for vanishing. Uh, like I. Uh, no, you the, said you the were whole... gonna be right back. Yeah, the whole thing borked, and I had to use the restroom. But um. You know what else borks? Dogs. dogs. Small dogs. Dog. Doge. It's good that we were all on the same page there. Yeah, we're first. Do Doge, what go bork? R.I.P. Pink Girl. Look, you guys can't get too attached to any given uh, character in a fist. Rip to your Pink Girl, but I'm different. <sighs> it is so weird going back and watching some of these VODs and hearing my own voice. I used to think that way, but I try to, like, skim through them all after I put them up to make sure that they're, like, you know... No, I enjoy, not I enjoy. I actually enjoy watching our vods a lot of the time. It's just kind no, it's of fun. It's just like what I, what I was getting at is like I'm at the point where I've gotten used to it because I do it like all the time. Mm. Yeah. Do it all the time, but I don't know how. But they found me. Who have a unwieldily long band. Uh, it is not as unwieldily long as success will write apocalypse across the sky. You're right, but I, it wasn't the competition. I know, I'm just saying that actually, like... Who's this I girl? Really, I pissed. love, like, the, the bizarre, really long band names that certain genres just kind of produce organically. Like, well, I, I wrote haikus about cannibalism in your yearbook is one of my favorite band names ever. That's... First of all, that's a sentence. <laughs> it is. Second of all, it's a weird sentence. It really is. And I love oh, it. Oh, uh, these are just our uh, our platformer lives, basically, Lexi. They all have they all look different for, for fun reasons. But um Because this is a good game that is good. Yes. But uh like I don't know how but they found me is somewhat notable for being an instance of that in what is a pop band. It's one of the guys from My Chemical Romance, I think? Or, uh... Well, I mean... No, Panic it at is the an, Disco. It is... I mean, it's distinctly... Like, those sort of long names tend to occur... It's like an outgrowth of emo. Yeah. Really, is a lot of those... Like, the thing is, like... Successful Ride Apocalypse Across the Sky were a deathcore band, and while it's not generally acknowledged like early emotional hardcore and screamo had a big influence on deathcore and hi i wrote hi shredney with the very your book hot takes. is uh um uh an actual screamo band so our uh i would set myself on fire for you one of my simple gear mutuals is a deathcore guitarist i think so. about that because huh. i also follow them and Death Core Kirika is a very good Twitter ad. But, yeah, um, I... yeah. They told me I was one of the gayest people in existence. <laughs> <laughs> that is good. Congratulations. Congratulations, you've won. <laughs> Oof! You just got pounded. Hmm. In the face. Bound. Bound. Pounded in the face by my own obstacles. Yes, exactly. I could I just couldn't think of a way to like finish the tuck the tuck jingle joke. Chuck tingle joke. Tuck jingle. God damn it. The tuck jingle. Tuck jingle. Hey, no. Let's go. Uh, hi, ho, let's go. Um, <laughs> Blitzkrieg Bob. Do, 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 do. Hi, ho, let's go. He had yeah. a really. Johnny Ramone had a very odd voice. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes, he did. Like, it's, a, it's kind of a great voice. But also really weird. You ever think like, about the fact that the one guy from the Ramones made a rap album, and it's really bad? yeah, yeah, Dee Dee, bassist. Dee Dee Ramone. 
There's yeah, also a also song he was on a... that album about his cat. Yeah, also he was a big fan of Ronald Reagan, although that I think he... That's extremely strange, given yeah, many things. It? it really is, and it's funny because the rest of the band were not Republicans. Let's see. No personal <laughs> questions on screen, please. R.I.P. Horsey, indeed. It's okay. Um, let's... Rip to your horsey, but I'm different. <laughs> you can't just keep saying Listen, that. I Listen, can. I don't know. You should ask. You should ask the person who told me I was one of the gayest people in existence. Like, look, it is very difficult to quantify, isn't it? Look, the difference is that Aesop Rock song about his cat is good. <laughs> yeah. Hey. Kirby. What about Kirby? This was song. That's the chorus of that song. Kirby is his cat. Is his cat named after? Him? I don't know, but I assume so. Could also be named after Jack Kirby. It could be, but he is a documented uh, player of Nintendo games. I mean, but both, like, I, neither would surprise. Yeah. Oh no, electrocuted horse. Now you're a cowgirl! Electrocuted horse would be a really good band name. Electrocuted <clears throat> Oh shit, yeah. I need to write that down. <laughs> <sighs> you're welcome, I think? Yeah. I don't know how, but they're Kirby. Hey, have you guys ever thought about, um... Mm... Nope, there it goes. The thought has left the station. Now I'm a fish with ours. Honestly, Electrocuted Horse could also be like a grindcore EP. I mean, it could be. I feel like it's got too much potential as a band name, though. You can't True let that point. Go. True. It's the the band is the ghost of the horse coming back for revenge. Oh. Now I'm just remembering what a good song uh, "Band of Susan's Hellbent" is. Hmm. It's wow. I meant real to good. Say you read that. Um. Yeah, like that album. Uh, Four ninety. Like I uh, uh, was a oh like a something for success. Uh, I can't remember. Um, mm -hmm. uh, is really really good. Um, <clears throat> haven't listened to it in a long time. Incidentally, Band of Susans were indeed formed by four women named Susan. Good. You know what else is formed by four women named Susan? What? Susan, Susan, and Susan, the law firm. You only said three there. The fourth yeah, one Susan, was not Susan, credited. Susan, and Susan. No, the fourth one wasn't credited on the sign because she's not a lawyer, she's just an accountant. Oh. Uh, okay. Yeah, that works. That scans. Uh, also, what wouldn't it be the worst thing to be named Susan Suzanne? Probably, yeah. It, because that is a thing that could happen because the name Suzanne with, you know, two N's is a... Is not a super common last name, but there's Jacqueline Suzanne was the, the writer of uh, The Valley of the Dolls. I got a bunch of stuff. I'm going to make a cast member real quick. What should I make them look like? Uh, make them look like me! Uh, I could try. Uh, Shredney, I've decided you're buff now. Okay, sure. Um, I am, like, deathly pale. Yeah, that's what I'm going for. What's your favorite color? Uh, I like dark blue. I will look for dark blue. Dark blue's probably towards the front, actually. 
Why is this part lagging so much? That's weird. That is strange. Oh, we got like a light blue. Gray. Deep red is good too. There was a deep red. Blue with red. There you go. Uh, hair color. You got like a brown. You got like brown hair going on. Dark brown. Yeah. Surely there's a brown in there somewhere. Wait, there it is. You want gogs yeah, on that's... or off? Whoa! Uh, cat ears. Oh, if I were able to have cat ears and the goggles on, that would be like A++. And unfortunately, it's the same equipment slot. Aww. You gotta pick one. Okay, I'll, I'll go with... I'll go with cat ears. Alright. This um... is homophobic. Huh. Uh. Oh! No! <laughs> Society! Uh, let's see here. Uh, uh, that's just not quite it. Go with bangs. What about or that? No, there that, you go. that works, kinda. Hair B? Ooh. They've expanded this a little bit since I last played. You want a, you uh, want a ponytail? The, <laughs> nah, uh, just like, just like as is. Yeah. Uh, uh blue. I'm gonna make you sleep. Or... Oh. I'm gonna give you a cat smile. That works. There you go. Uh, done. There we go. Red tragedy. Uh, uh, what is wow. the article about? Sections reading? Uh, Got cut off. I don't me. know. Article I'm reading is really charming. About Joey Ramone's <laughs> crush on a CNBC personality. Interesting. Huh. Any, anyway, let's see how long we can make Cat Shredney last. Let's go. Probably significantly longer than I actually would. Uh, I mean, that's fair. Like, this is some pretty physically taxing stuff, even just these simple jumps. Yeah. Even if I were in, like, some weird low gravity chamber, which I assume this is. Maybe? I don't really know. There's not too much lore in Fist, em Fist Elimination Tower. I I'm gonna guess that it's, like, some weird low gravity situation. Could be. Given, like, the nature of the jumps. Yeah. And how small you are. And also the nature of the weird bunny robots. Yeah, the weird hey, bunny Hey, I robots just are... realized that that's a joke. Bunny robot, bunny rabbit. Oh. <laughs> wow, these people are... Their pun game is real strong. Bunny it's... robot. It's terrible, but it's really strong. I also just realized that the bunny rabbits explode into bees. Or like, well, no, they seem to explode into one of a couple different things. Sometimes it's confetti, confetti. sometimes it's nuts and bolts. Yeah. Occasionally, I guess it's bees, or feathers, I the guess, is another one. The exploding into confetti reminds me of the film Paprika for some reason. I love that sunglasses count as armor. Yeah, you know, just like in real life. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, relatable. I can hear wind being done with my shit from here. <gasps> I, I mean, didn't have a real reaction. No. I consider them spiritual armor. Spiritual armor. For spiritual warfare. Exactly. You understand, Win. Remember that episode of Ki that episode of Kids Next Door where they think that bra stands for battle ready armor? <laughs> Vaguely. Good, good, good. That was kind of like four twenty. I think that's it. I think that's the entire joke in the in the thing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I mean, when you got a banger like that, that's all you need. You guys ever think about Kids Next Door? What a weird show. It was a weird show. I did not care like, for it. I can't. But I can admit it was odd. Yeah. Like I can't think of many shows that start out as like dumb comedy, and then they develop deep lore. Yeah. It doesn't happen yeah. super often. It's I mean, life, really. it's, it's like... I mean, 
I can think of at least one anime series that's kind of along those lines. I can although... too. But, uh, you know, Western wise, it seems very rare. Yeah, it's relatively uncommon. Maybe they were right. Oh, there goes Shredder. Oh no, I died. <laughs> Killed by time. Let's just say I was reincarnated as this. As this, this blonde man with a mustache and a baseball cap. Yeah, uh, but at least I'm still cute. Yeah. You look like the main character of, like, uh, a series of shorts commissioned by the post office. By the French post office, to be specific. Or it or an obscure, like, I'm gonna say, like, Albanian Mario knockoff? <laughs> Albanian Mario knockoff. That's a good band name, too. Yeah. Wow. <sighs> you know, they introduced yeah, the that negative make... coins, and then they used them so rarely. That's just making me think of, uh, like, this whole band name thing is making me think of uh, raccoonsexdungeon.tumblr.com. Okay, that time I just didn't jump when I pressed the jump button, so that's fun. Like, does anybody else remember that I XKCD strip? I do remember that XKCD strip. Does it randomly generate them if you yeah. don't Yeah. put characters in? Yes. Rip by rip. That is how Tear it by tear. Yeah. Gotcha. It, uh, in fact, you, there's like a cap on how many you can make. Oh, uh, oh, I like is, this uh, person. They are very cute. Yes. They are very good. The cap is like less than the amount that you can. Oh god, oh fuck. Oh no, they died. <laughs> I'm sorry. This person why, is, why a, do... is a tennis champion. Oh, okay. Oh, obliterated. And they are dead. Horsehead. Horsehead. Dead. Having a lot of trouble Horse with this dead. one today for some reason. There we go. Last round we had one that came up that was basically me. Me in real life. Me in real life. Just Jane demonstrating suboptimal tigger, uh, 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 trigger discipline. <laughs> trigger discipline. Trigger discipline. Oh no. I don't want to think about what that could possibly be. I, I guess, like... The darkest corners of the Winnie the Pooh fandom. <laughs> I, I, I just, I don't even know. Sometimes I just don't even know. Only bounce when you want to. You can leave your friends behind. Because your friends don't bounce, and if they don't bounce, they ain't no friends of mine. do 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 you know, Men Without Hats are a group with an exceptional band name. Yeah. Yes. They are an affiliate, they are an association of gentlemen who choose to not don any headwear. Yes. Indeed they are. Ooh, oh. Men's headwear. Alright, I just jumped into the abyss there. Shots and shots and shots. Also pronounced abyss very strangely, and then I did it again. <laughs> abyss. It's like an abyss. Abyss. You know, who runs an abbey? That is what that I think, word would be. Yeah. I think I used to say that, say it like that as a kid before I realized it was abyss. Abyss. You know. Abyss. Whole anime. Hmm. <laughs> whole anime. Those are I generally called hentai. No, I was talking about Made in Abyss. <laughs> that's not hentai, that's just disturbing for other reasons. Boy, oh boy. Uh, Oof. We have fun here. We Dying. do. Speak for yourselves. <laughs> uh. I, I find, I find I have it ironic fun. that the gayest person in existence is our straight man. Da 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 da
Look out for fists! Look out for fists. Yeah, look Three, out for fists. One, Don't get fisted. Hmm. Unless you're into that. Yeah, not with a, not without enthusiastic consent. And a lot of loop. Yeah. Enthusiastic yes. consent, also a band name. Continuous enthusiastic consent. Yes. Okay, Sonny. Shredney at least gets the joke. I don't. I'm trying to remember I what specifically it's a reference to, on but planet Earth right now. Look at I flying you. fuck skull. This looks like yes, a yes, age I 60. remember it now. <laughs> yes, the flying fuck skull. That was. That is that's that is a good crap shot. Oh no! <laughs> the loading ready run thing, Jane. I see. Uh, yeah, specifically they do very short sketches called crap shots, and one of them was the uh, the, the involved the flying fox skull. Wait, is that what that series is? I always figured that had something to do with like film criticism. No, no, no they're, they're just really. Sketches. They're really short sketches. Interesting. And they're they are often really funny and bizarre. You know what else is bizarre? Uh, I'm uh, I'm ready for quantum very physics. Fair. I was I was ready for something way more bad jokey. Listen. Only about half the time do I actually have anything planned out at the end when I ask, you know what else is X? <laughs> yeah. Gonna give it and to the you. fallback answer is my mom, so don't... Don't force it. Your mom? Sorry, my, my mom. My mom? Yeah. <laughs> Physics is that thing that you don't have to worry about, Zersk. I mean, yeah, hey, Zersk defies physics. <laughs> oh, that's right, yeah. Zersk has a physics degree, I forgot about that. Even though she's told me like eight times at this point. Wow, this guy's bushy. My dude is looking like an entire sunflower. Needless to say, he keeps it in check. <laughs> you know I gotta keep it fresh. I still- I've told that story on this show before, right? The guy that I met a few weeks ago, I was yeah. walking home from the store, and he just randomly <laughs> said, you gotta keep it fresh. As oh, he was I mean, fixing his hair in a car window. <laughs> he's right. He's right, and I think about it a lot. Also, yeah. Sage uh, advice. like, on the way home earlier, uh, me and Cece went out for lunch, and on our way back, we saw a guy <laughs> dressed up as Steven Universe for no apparent reason. Okay. Well, That's okay, a... it's not fair to say he was dressed up, I guess, but he, he had the shirt and the, the jeans, and he had, oh. he had like, oh. slippers on? I don't know what was going on, but I hope he was like, having a good time. Slippers or flip flops? No, they were slippers. Okay. Trust me, I know I know what slippers look like. I look at them and envy I'm, anytime I see them. I'm just I was just thinking because like in order to go full cosplay for Steven Universe, you would need flip flops. Yeah. Alright. Uh. Let's do one more real quick. Sometimes we talk about slippers here, Eric. Sometimes. Sometimes I run. Sometimes I hide. Sometimes I'm scared. And I ran. I ran so far away. Ouch. Just to get away. Dun, 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 dun. What is what was that? You did that's like a, a the guitar mashup. riff. From a, no, that's the, that's the guitar riff from a, you know I ran. I, I ran. Is it? You know, as it goes, I have, has that crazy echo I have on it. I've listened to that song dun, 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 not dun, very much dun, dun. in my lifetime. Ba -da -da -da. 
Aurora Borealis. It's a Guitar God song and nobody realizes it because it sounds like a synth. I did know that it was a guitar because I have seen uh, the Todd in the Shadows episode on the subject. It has a... It has a... The, the guy who was the main guitarist for hey. a flock of seagulls when they were, you know, actually a band with people doing things other than the vocalist mm -hmm. uh, yes. were at, like was a really solid guitarist I only just realized that uh, you see this little matrix of black dots uh -huh. Uh -huh. it follows your character and when you uh, jump on one of the bunny robots it like does a, it like lights up mm -hmm. I have never noticed that before and it also occasionally counts down things. Hmm. Like if you're yeah, like timer three, two, is one. Low. Yeah. That's an incredible attention to detail. It yeah. is really nicely done. Yeah. I mean, I started noticing oh. the numbers just like now. Was like, yeah, there's some. Whoa! Stuff what is going, going on. on with this guy? <laughs> You see in this man? Yeah. God. It's a little clown man. Hiddly do, I'm Scruffins McNuffle. <laughs> the fuck, Jane. The fuck. Oh no. Oh no, Scruffins, Scruffins McNuffle. McNuffle. <laughs> How right, dare well. you? Oh no. Oh no. R.I.P. Scruffins McNuffle, but I'm different. This guy looks like the guy who would say that because yes. he like we got a has we got that a gym rat. Like, it, I can't remember what they call you know that the the headband like thing. the the headband either. like but I mean there's there's a term for yeah, that. Yeah, I forget it also. Alrighty. And I jumped, I jumped so high into the sky. That was in a, that was in a, it wasn't in the wrong key. You were singing it in a different mode. That was really weird. Trendy, it was cool how, though. How many times no, I thought do I cool. have to tell you I've got bad tone differentiation? <laughs> yeah, but it sounded really cool actually. You know what else sounds cool? Wow, I managed to die on the transition screen. Beautiful. But, um... The answer, the follow-up answer to my question was, uh, Boards of Canada. Boards of Canada sound cool. Sound like what? They do sound cool. Um... I am not wow. super familiar with their work, honestly. You like, should listen to more of it, because it's real good. Um, hmm. Geo God yeah, is that makes, one of the that best scans. albums ever. Wow, alright. I'm, I'm throwing. Listen to Dazzle Get Shirt? good, Jane. I know, I... God. It is it is offensive to me that you would assume I have not listened to Dazzle Ships by orchestral maneuvers in the dark many times. That I is, have sampled that album a couple times. That is some high tier synth pop nerdery you've just laid down there. I don't is it? <laughs> I thought like, that was not just that like many a people talk about orchestral maneuvers in the dark. I thought that was just a well known, very good album. I mean, it is known by people who care about that sort of thing. I guess so. Like, I have a weird area, like, I'm in a weird area with, like, synth pop music where I don't listen to much of the well-known stuff from that era, but I like, like, fucking OMD and the Blue Nile. You know what I think you would be into are, like, all those what are known now as, like, minimal synth bands? Maybe? Like, the, it was Blue a, it was like very elaborate music, though. 
N uh, no, like, I mean, yeah, like, but at the same time, I just think, like, you, you just seem like, I don't know how to, why, but it's just, like, it seems like, like, the, like, that sort of, like, old school sort of bedroom, slightly experimental, but, like, still reasonably accessible in a way, synth music seems like something you would dig. Probably. I mean, uh, I like the, the Drab Majesty album that came out this year, which I have forgotten hmm. the name of, but it's got, like, a guy in extremely pale makeup, like, just hanging out in a record store. Like, very, the yeah, the ver yeah, the one that's, like, yeah, I've heard a little of Drab Majesty stuff. They're, like, you know, like a very old school kind of goth synth band. Yeah, they're nice. Yeah, like I, I what I heard was solid. It was like it's it's very strange. Like they kind of hitched their their wagon to the vaporwave community, and I think it's gotten them more uh -huh. of a fan base than they might otherwise have. I mean, yeah, that is that is an interesting parallel because I've always thought of vaporwave honestly as being a natural successor to this particular side of an early industrial music that people don't really talk about anymore which is like that heavily like sort of like the side of it that was heavily influenced by like 50s exotica records and like the early tape side. music I like, like, I like Exotica music, too. I never talk about that, because, like, nobody else does. <laughs> uh, actually, uh, like, Throbbing Gristle were huge fans of 50 I, Exotica. I, I'm music. exaggerating, but it's not a very popular genre. No, but I am actually, but no, but I'm saying this is yeah. actually really, I do find it kind of amusing, is, like, people don't really talk about that ever, but it's, like, it was legitimately a big influence on their music. Martin Denny, the well-known... Yeah, guy. Martin Denny specifically was, like, their idol. Why would you be shot for asking about Martin Denny? <laughs> it's like somebody oh. getting upset with you for saying you like, I don't know, the Beatles, because yeah. you like rock and roll. Uh, like, that girl Ma is the real crowd. Three, yeah. Two, one, go! <laughs> And hey, like, better Martin Denny than Les Baxter, who was, like, similarly skilled, but boy, have his album titles not aged very well. Hmm. Uh, I, I don't have context for that, but I, I can guess. I mean, like, I don't think calling most of the Exotica guys racist is exactly wrong. They are definitely guilty of come here let me whisper in your ear exoticization <laughs> yeah it's like yeah i was genre. thinking like they yeah like there's definitely a weird kind of like it's along the lines of like old school orientalism yeah that's a good way to put it like it, it's very much you know the mysteries of the east yes and also you know? what the fuck am oh I, I, now? I love that oh <laughs> that's like, so good what am i no <laughs> you're dead you're a little far. spaceman a corpse a little apparently. junk spaceman oh this character is cute and just got <laughs> murdered Shreddy, you're jinxing me that's okay we're at the end of the show what a yeah, horrible basically. ugly awful character just the worst fucking dog shit of a character. They look kind of like Quail Man. Uh, he looks kind of like a minion. Worst character in my life. <laughs> but uh, like just legit, horrid. like some, like a little bit like a minion, but also like Quail Man from Doug. Disgusting. <laughs> if I have to look at this character for one more second, my eyes will leave my head. <laughs> When? Have. Yeah. Have? Th this is. Ha I, I. Choose your next words have carefully, you ever considered Certain career opportunities. Because uh, <laughs> you're unfortunately very good at this. Unfortunately. <laughs>
It's really funny, but it's just like, wow. Natural at contempt. Natural yeah. contempt would also be a good band name. <laughs> Tell yeah. me I'm wrong. I'm not. Fuck. Natural contempt. Ooh. Oh god, that's like... That sounds like it would be like either... It could be all kinds of different sorts of bands, but I'm thinking like one of those weird unclassifiable 80s bands. Or like, um, I don't know. My mind immediately went to a fucking And You Will Know Us by the Trail of the Dead, a band I know literally nothing yeah. about beyond their name. They're, a, they're like a, a song-oriented post-rock band song if you oriented know as opposed to all those other kinds of music no you know what i mean like i rather do than, it's uh, just a, it's just a funny phrase what they call what they call in the business crescendo core the fuck is <laughs> i swear you like have the ability to reverse engineer these terms <laughs> into history no crescendo core is like a derogatory term for like <laughs> You know explosions in the sky, right? I like explosions in the sky. I'm saying all the bands that sound like knockoff explosions in the sky. Okay. Like, oh, that man. is what Crescendo Core is. Wow, at the exact three hour mark. There we go. Damn. We did it. We did it. We did it, chat. Another Yeehaw. one in the bank. We did it, fam. God, and if I ever... We... If I ever we... start saying that unironically, please unsubscribe and block me. <laughs> and, uh, put, do we put Jane out of her misery if she unironically says we did it, fam? Uh, all right, well, we did it, Reddit. Here's something I'm gonna do unironically, which is a uh, run ads at the end of the stream. So we will right. see. We will see you guys next week. I will be streaming probably either tomorrow or Saturday. I don't know what I'm gonna stream yet. I might do another Illusion of Gaia show. I'm not sure. Good night. But, uh, yeah, goodbye, good folks. Good night. Thank you all for coming out. Please, good night. Uh, and for now, it's time to go. Da, 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 da. <laughs> but, um, yeah, thank you guys all for coming out. It was, we had a lively chat this this week. We don't always get that. Yee. I'm appreciative of it when we do get it. I will Love see you all around. Good night. Remember you are loved. And here's some ads. Uh, is it going to actually run them? Why do I need to click the button twice every time? There we go. All right. All right. <clears throat> is it doing it? It is. Which means it's we, doing it! Which means we got two minutes of dead air here at the end, but I'm just going to head yeah. to the bathroom and then uh, kill the stream after I get back. Hey, Eric got ads. I need to ask what they are. Mine looks like it's for Miller. The Tang vaping ad again. Lego oh, no. truck? Lego truck is good. Beautiful. Okay, Technic. Oh, that is rad. What is Technic? Uh, it's like the thing that Bionicle sprang out of. Ah, it is an, okay, cool. It's been around cool. for like a long time, but it was like popular when I was kid. Interesting. And they brought it back recently. Anyway, I'm going to head to the bathroom and then I'm going to show the stream when I get back. See you guys. Okay, bye. Bye. bye.
Largo. Do 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 do